Hello, I'm Nathan. I'm Cameron. I'm David. And we're the commentators, and uh, today we're doing a commentary track for Star Trek, the motion picture. And eating nachos. And the eat no motion picture? The motion picture, and eating nachos. Not to be confused confused with Star Trek, directed by J.J. Abrams. Yes, yes. What about Star Trek the movie? Isn't is there Star Trek? The is there? Star no. Trek the film? Star Trek the movie? There's oh, I, those. I see what <laughs> you're doing. <laughs> Uh, I picked the movie this week. This is the first time we're doing this. Couple of reasons why I picked this movie. One, <coughs> it has this nice long overture at the beginning so we can <laughs> talk about uh, who we are and why we're here. Um, just uh, gonna be doing commentary tracks for any movies we want, just for the hell of it. Yeah, and uh, they, now, could, they could be films that we've seen, films that we yeah, haven't seen. Exactly. Yeah. For for whatever reason, whoever's turn it is to pick that movie, they can pick it for whatever reason they want, and we have to watch it and and talk about it. We might even be naked. There you go. Yeah. I'm naked right now. One thing I want to naked talk and nachos. <laughs> That's the way to watch a Star Trek movie. One thing we have to mention is Jerry Goldsmith's score. Yeah. yeah. Right now, oh, yeah. right now, what you're listening to is probably the single best aspect of this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's the thing with I, I'm curious if if this was like the last major motion picture to have an overture like this at the beginning. Because you, when you see an overture in a movie, you think of like Ben-Hur mm -hmm. or Lawrence of Arabia, something like that. Or 2001 A Space 2001. It's like, but yeah, Star Trek the motion picture. Like why, I don't, I'm not entirely sure why they would have an overture at the beginning. Because then you have the overture and then you have the opening, you have an opening credit sequence, which is exactly, which is essentially the same thing. As a as a modern overture, Ooh, because Star Trek is the yeah. classy bitches. And there's oh, a, you got and there's yeah, a logo. They, 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 yeah, if you if you synced up your your you know, movie correctly, the Paramount logo just came up. And now May it's gone. And you know maybe and it's just me, but whenever I see the Paramount logo, it's probably just from a, mis a youth misspin on horror movies. I always think of Friday the Thirteenth because huh. they always started with. <laughs> and, and the big thing is, it's directed by Robert Wise, who he himself Robert Wise is a yes. great director. He He's a, but not this time. Not this he's, time. He's, he's known for, he's known for like, I, I see him as known for mainly two kinds of movies. He does sci-fi. He did mm -hmm. uh, Daily Earth Suit Still yeah. and Drama to Strain, which is a really cool movie. Oh, yeah. And he's done huge, epic, big budget musicals. Mm -hmm. West, West Side, I almost said West, West Side Story. Yep. Which I'm, and, not a, which I'm not a huge fan of. Not, not, I mean, the movie itself was well made, yeah. but I'm not a huge fan of the musical itself. And, of itself. course, West World Story. West yes. World Story is amazing. Yeah. And The Sound of Music. And The Sound of Music, which is... A near perfect film. I or think. oh, Stephen Collins, that's topical. Steve or, Collins, uh, he oh, is. He yeah. is. I think he's one of the really good things in this movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree with uh, that. Yeah, he has a really. But we'll get into it once he shows up. Yeah. We can get more into. But him. why is he topical? But he touched a chair. Right? Oh God, I fucking forgot about that. Yeah. You just ruined the one thing that I liked about this, <laughs> about this movie. Good. Yeah, yeah, damn it. Good. Oh man. Oh, and Alan Dean Forster himself is also Alan a, Foster. a wonderful mm -hmm. science well -known fiction. Well-known sci-fi sci-fi writer. And the other thing about Gene it, Roddenberry. Uh, I forgot about Robert yeah. Wise. Is like he did have like this wonderful master of different genres, like not only Day of the Earth, but also like good dramas, like I Want to no. Live and horror as well with The Haunting. So it makes sense that this would be a guy. And right then and there, that's I think that's yeah. A yeah he's known image. for big budget epics and yeah. sci-fi, and, and this he, is supposed to like fuse the two. But and one thing you can say about Star Trek: The Motion Picture, it doesn't look bad. I like well, that. Yeah, it doesn't. Ninety-five percent of it doesn't look bad. We look, had, we'll get to the five percent I personally think look bad. Probably as soon as the crew of the Enterprise shows up. Yeah, they had all the money in the world for this movie to make is really good special effects. All because of Star stuff Wars. Looks good. Yeah. All because of Star Wars. And of course, later on, the, the, this stuff. The, the, the they birds reused of prey, it in three, right? Uh, two. I thought that you also reused it in three. Uh, well, three they they redesigned it and they had I think they, oh, they yeah. introduced the color green, like this neon green, yeah. I believe. Yeah, you know what? Going back to the score, you know what? I know it's uh, weird because um, correct me wrong, but I don't remember them using that score in the opening of the other original crew in the cr opening credits. Mm -hmm. So now, whenever I hear that score, I always think of Next Generation. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. they reused the score for it. Yeah. But according to Big Bang Theory, it's either this or Star Trek Let's, Five that has the worst I'm, score. I'm, <laughs> it's the it's the same goddamn thing. Yeah. Now this is interesting because this is the first time we see Klingons. Where it's not just white actors in blackface. <laughs> um, I believe with, you with mean painted brown on. face. Thank yeah. you very much. Well, that's that. That's what it was. So now they have, you know, the sci-fi is very popular right now. They have all the money in the world, so they're like, let's make the Klingons look awesome. And they've been even even though basically every one in the scene looks exactly the same, and they yeah. kind of varied it up. Later okay, on, now but, that's racist. Aww. But oh, you can't tell the Klingons apart. All, all Klingons look the same, camera. Typical, That's typical, what I'm typical white cis <laughs> Uh oh. 
And they're playing Atari right now? Yeah, they're, they're playing... Right yeah, they're, actually, it wasn't a Sega arcade game. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is that supposed now, to Even be? on the Klingon yeah. ship, nothing is fucking happening in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at those but, then again, but then again, oh, typical man. Klingon firing at, you know, the nebula's looking at us weird. ta ta Yeah. Isn't this also the first time we got the Klingon language, or did they have that in the original series? I don't know. I think this might have been the first time. I, 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 I think they used it like sparingly, but they, they didn't really. Been, they I might mean, have said Kapla! now. Yeah, now they have like a whole dictionary and yeah. you know Hamlet written in Klingon and stuff like that. It's, it's yeah. Which is, that's what I liked about Star Trek Six, where they had to you know translate what was it oh. to be or not to be, mm-hmm. but they didn't have Klingon for to yeah. be. So yeah, now that now there's people out there who are like. Language expert, you know, there's people who are Tolkien language experts. There are people who are Star Trek language experts. Nice save. Those nachos almost went to the floor. Good save by David here. Then they would have been Listers. And is that the most interesting thing that's happened so far? I don't know. I do like how it's building no, up. Like, it's like, it's yeah. mysterious. You don't know what's going on exactly. Even yeah, but it's so, God, it's so slow. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like, they're, they're, it's like they're trying to copy two thousand one, but yeah, at the same yeah. try, time trying really to copy weird, Star Wars, and it's two things see, that don't go well together. And it's weird they chose to copy two thousand one for the story aspect because with the I mean, nothing is two thousand one, but with effects like this and like such a huge threat that's going to be revealed later on, mm-hmm. he is looking at those nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, but uh, you, they went with two thousand one as opposed to Star Wars because. Yes, this all looks impressive, but you know, you could you could just show that guy in the spacesuit slowly moving, then cut to him entering, mm. or just have him floating around in space. Yeah. Or what's also interesting is the fact that I mean, does everyone yeah. in this movie wear yeah. night clothing? Yeah, that's, that's oh god, that that is the one thing that we need to talk about. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, so much is the it's goddamn like, costume design. The, the He's wearing a bathrobe. Look at that guy. Pajamas. Why is pajamas. he wearing a bathrobe? The only in person, the, in, the only person in this movie that wears something that's even close to looking like what a person Wee. would wear yeah. is Kirk. Because he has, because his shit is actually two piece. Yeah, his his, his admiral outfit actually yeah. looks it's Star Trek somewhat party. good, but everything yeah. else is yeah, just the, like God, the Star Trek. I, I don't think the original cast of Star Trek got really awesome costumes until Star Trek Two. Oh, those yeah. are still oh, my, yeah, absolutely. those are still my favorite. They were Star so Trek. good they lasted five movies. Yeah, so, so. of course I love that effect. Oh yeah, that's, that's cool. a good little effect. Good, nice little leaf. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I like how the cap how the, how the captain and the Klingon now there seat. were three ships. One got destroyed. Yeah, and now one's left. Maybe the other one made like Wedge Antilles and I flew away. The, no, the <laughs> yeah the other one was like like let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna shoot a torpedo at his ass. Mm, I did that earlier this morning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the captain's hair, the the Klingon captain's hair, is all turned off like he's some sort of you know happy oh, I like elf. That. <laughs> No, but um, as I was saying... We're, Shoot another ass torpedo before it... Oh, God, we were dead. Oh. No, but it's interesting because you mentioned, like, Star Wars and all, because you got this film that came out two years after after mm-hmm. Star Wars, but this was also the same year as, as Alien, and so what you got are these two... Oh, that's right, it is. Oh, oh I forgot these about These two science fiction these two. films, and then this one, and it seemed like a little outdated and it's 1979. And it can make, I don't mean to interrupt, yeah. but listen oh, to this God. line reading. Oh, my God, it's so awful. Yeah. Oh God! Uh oh! Like, like I, I, I'm almost curious to see what the bad takes were that didn't yeah. make it into the you know, movie. You know what's like, kind of interesting when you, th- when you think about it? The plot. Oh wait, here's Beatnik Spock. And here's Sp- Here's Leonard Nimoy, who really didn't want to be in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you know the reason why he didn't want to? He, I mean, from what I can understand, he was kind of resented the fact that he was only known as Mr. Spock. And I guess they, they just had to pay him a shitload of money to be in it. And then when they decided to make Rathacon, he would only be in it if he died. Um, and then they wanted to make another, and it's like, I'll only be in it if I get to direct it, or whatever. Like, I don't know. But for a long time, he, he kind of resented the fact that he was only known as Mr. Spock. But then, I guess, later in life, he kind of saw it as a blessing, as a blessing in disguise. And his fame for that was able to let him, you know, do a lot of good, which is, you know, which is always nice. But... The sacred foot statue of the planet. Of yeah. <laughs> I know that Robert Wise was not happy with the how the production designed mm-hmm. some elements and the visual yeah. effects, and so what was it back in two thousand one? He went back and redid some of the. Yes, effects? yes. So we should mention we are watching the Blu-ray, which is the original version, not the 
um, director's cut, which is slightly different. So if you're listening to this like, with a director's cut, eh, it might be a little out of sync. The, but the Vulcan the costumes just. aren't bad. Yeah. Well, these ones look fine. Yeah. Because they're Vulcans. They have to kind of look weird, but... <laughs> it's really weird that a species that is so, uh, you know, anti-emotion will go to the trouble of looking fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> well, they want to look pretty to other people. But should they care what other people think? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a good question. But, you, okay, you know what's really odd? When you look at the plot of this one and then look at the plot of Star Trek Four, they're kind of similar. Like, <coughs> something mysterious is coming towards Earth, destroying everything in its path. Yeah, see, it, it all depends on <coughs> if your story is in the right hands. Because <coughs> all of them, because Star, Star Trek Four is a ridiculous, kind of stupid premise. Like, oh, there's a thing that's going to destroy Earth. It needs to talk to whales that are endangered. And then you've got, like, this political message that could be, you know, just bashed over the head with, but it's handled so well that it's really entertaining and really good. Just, so as long as you put your movie in the right hands, you can have the dumbest premise ever and it'll still be entertaining or, to or watch. Or just the idea of just tra- t- time traveling back to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And if it was in lesser hands, you know what would have happened. It would have been like, hi boys, you want to get the whales? <laughs> and I so many great, like, divorce guys going, dialysis, that's barbaric. <laughs> Take one of these and call me in the morning. That man Hitting his back. <laughs> <coughs> they could, but they did it with such a way where they found the right humor. Oh yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. good fish out of water. There's a stuff. really good movie. Um, Isn't there one where Spock uh, puts the Vulcan nerve pinch on some yeah. punk rock yeah. and everyone <laughs> applauds? That's the best scene in the movie. Yeah. But there's a really good movie um, directed by the guy who directed Rathacon and Undiscovered oh, Country, oh, and he co-wrote they, um, yes, Star yes, Trek yes. Four. Oh goodness. Uh, time after time, yes, or time exactly. Time? Time after Which time. is again a movie with a really dumb. Oh, they premise. reused that. Didn't they reuse that shot in two? Yes, I think. So. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they reused. And now we're back to shots. Next Generation. <laughs> yeah. This is during the two years where Starfleet decided they were just gonna have a big slumber party. <laughs> oh wait, here he comes. Get this hero shot right here. This is beautiful. Spa. Monorail <laughs> of the future. There he is. Oh, look at that. <laughs> now, which way look does he wear? The job. only guy with a decent costume look at that. this entire yeah, it movie. looks great. And they reused that later for for Star Trek for the, the GJ. Yeah, Star and that's a good idea. The only thing I would change about it was maybe uh, you, you see that buckle right there. Maybe make that the more fanny of a, packs. <laughs> yeah, maybe make it more of a complete belt. Actually, it looks less like a fanny pack, more like a power morpher. It's, yeah, we're expect, like, you know, you're what are they supposed to be? I don't even know. You're expecting him to grab. I him own a Star Trek encyclopedia. I still don't know what the <laughs> fuck those things are supposed to be. I would love to see a sequence where some where you know Kirk just grabs that and goes Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> oh, and, and changes into his red suit. <laughs> oh, and Star and, Trek and, too. And to clarify, the director of Wrath of Khan, Time of Time, is Nicholas. Meyer. I had Nicholas to look, Meyer, I had to look it up because oh. I was this close to oh, saying I, thought, I, I was this close to saying Nicholas Rogue who directed Don't Look Now <laughs> uh, Walk About a um, bunch of like sexually charged <laughs> and um correct me if I'm wrong but didn't that last sequence have to do with um, uh, him meeting his new first officer yeah, who's he, also that's a the new first officer the new science officer to replace Spock because Spock wants nothing to do with Starfleet right now but he comes back anyway because he has a mental link with the V'ger Oh, you spoiled it. Or whatever. You spoiled oh, yeah, spoiler it. alert. Right, spoiler alert, this movie rips off an episode of Star Trek, the original series. Spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's just, you know, I'm just going to talk about that now, because it kind of pisses me off. Because the movie is basically V'ger, this giant ship that's coming to destroy Earth is a satellite from hundreds of years ago and it's looking for its creator. Called Voyager. You can't find it. Wait, is this the, uh, this is yeah, the, the Doomsday, Voyager 6 Doomsday or whatever. Machine, right? It's, I think it's called the Changeling, which oh. is about a smaller probe that Enterprise finds, and he's looking for, and it mistakes Kirk for his oh. creator, I think and is going to destroy everything. But he and and that forty five minutes of cheap sixty sci fi television is a thousand times more entertaining yep. and, and than this if, fucking movie. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first introduction of Scotty's porn stash. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Which, whenever I grew up with Star Trek, I mean. This is what I always associate him with, that, that mustache. So when I watch the older episodes, I miss the mustache. Yeah. This is the last right, time so, we saw a skinny Scotty as well. Yeah, this, so, um, I was going to say this is the last rest time... Rest in peace, James Doohan. This is the last apologize. time James Doohan saw his dick. <laughs> okay, so... Um, oh God, David. So, so uh, you all know like the, the reputation that uh, Shatner has behind the scenes. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Horrible, horrible, How, okay, horrible. something is just making me wonder if maybe... Just maybe he saw the costume designs and went, "Look, I don't care what everybody else wears. I'm wearing something better." <laughs> no, but this is the only time he wears that costume. For the rest of the movie, he, he wears 
the same and then, thing. And then that's the costume design. Right that's now. the costume design department. A little bit of revenge on him. Ugh. Like, yeah, you have to Maybe. wear this for like five minutes. <laughs> God, this sequence goes on for like twenty fucking minutes. It, it, the thing is, every time I Good see this God. sequence, I'm reminded of that uh, the, of a riff from MST3K, the uh, the the space mutiny one, like shuttlecraft designated as cute, sir. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's just that's the only good. The great thing about the sequence is you get to listen to the score and the music. Yeah. But, I also, really but nice. I also liked it just because, oh, like, because I'm assuming that's Kirk going back to the Enterprise, right? yeah, for the yeah. first time. And that's why I really like because it's sort of like the uh, we've been to we've been through some rough things together, yeah. some great things, wonderful things. Yeah. We're back together, so they, that's why I can't. I forget how long, Plus, in this movie, how long has it been since he's been on the Enterprise? Mm. I think they mention it, but I don't remember. It's been years, I think, because they mention that they've. They have all the money now. They've redone the Enterprise. They want to make it look nice and new. They've, quote-unquote, refitted it, as they say. So the movie wants to just show shit off as much as they can and make it look awesome. And it does look yeah, great. Yeah, it does look awesome. But, but it just goes on but, and on and on. I mean, this might just be because I'm not super, super hardcore, but I don't really see what's different about the outside of the Enterprise aside from the... Um, what are they, the warp nasos? Oh, oh, there's a lot different, Cameron. You, you don't even know. Okay. okay you well, know, he doesn't know. <laughs> That's why he's asking you, dingus. Yeah, what's oh, different? What's different? And, and this thing and also... The cells are different. The things well, that are attached that, to the nacelles are at an angle. They, the they the body itself this. is a little bigger. They, it re- does. they reuse this for Star Trek See, too. that's another thing. They reuse this entire sequence for Star Trek 2. And, and they, cut it, they cut it down to a nice, reasonable length. And you get all the same stuff. You get the same emotion and information yeah. across. Yeah. And it doesn't take... 20 goddamn minutes. It, it really does feel like the, with the way Shatner's looking at the Enterprise in this sequence that you should be hearing like let's get it on yeah. while he's looking at it. It's a Marvin Gaye playing over. Yeah, yeah cause you just because I mean, the thing is the way you look at it it's just like you imagine every time he was banging some alien chick he was just thinking of putting his dick in his shit. <laughs> What's See, it? I would watch that movie over this. <laughs> I just, so, like, so I guess next week we're watching This Ain't Star Trek Triple <laughs> so, we'll so we'll just watch Kirk fuck the Enterprise. <laughs> what was that gag? Fuck the Klingons away. What was the gag like? Like, I fucked the, I fucked the Enterprise, believe me. Okay, is that new? I, that, um, I, that like, uh, I guess, racing stripe with the Enterprise logo? No, yeah, it had a racing stripe in the old. It just looked different. Oh. The Enterprise has always had racing stripes, yeah. okay? Because that, of course, makes it go faster. It made the Kessel run in under 12 parsecs, okay? Motherfucker, no, it didn't. <laughs> and just to let everyone know, this is the Enterprise. This oh, yeah. and, uh, and we're still looking at the Enterprise. Yeah. Um, the Enterprise. And, uh, Scotty, uh, Scotty, we just passed the, the ship. Scotty, oh, Scotty, we, we should turn around, ah! Scotty. Scotty, what the... Scotty, come on. <laughs> Do something! <laughs> So, um, have we talked the entire time we've been in this spot? <laughs> it's just kind of awkward, but like, so, um... I would like yeah, to see like, this entire yeah. sequence from the, from the point of view of Inside the Potter. It's just awkward silence. No, I'd like to see it from the point of view of Scotty. Kirk, just... Kirk, Kirk with his hand down his pants, just like, oh yeah, the new Enterprise. <laughs> and Scotty's it just... looks so good. Scotty doesn't want to look, but he can't look away. He can't look away. It's like a car crash. You just can't. Maybe Scotty gets back in the ship, talks to his engineering crew. He didn't talk to me the entire fucking time. <laughs> We're in there for ten fucking minutes. <laughs> it does look nice. Look at those effects. Yeah, 1979. It looks great. Mm-hmm. It's boring as fuck, but it looks great. <laughs> and of course, it God, lost. just fuck it already. <laughs> and it also, it did lose the best visual effects Oscar to to Alien. I can well, understand that. I can understand that. Oh yeah, I know. Because while all this ship stuff. Does look good. I think with Alien, what makes it look good is what's what made it win that, and just and it's funny. I was saying that um, the Klingons look great. The Xenomorph, the Alien, that's a miracle of the time. Yeah, but what also I think is like I just want to also point out when it, point out when it comes to this is that is this is a very clean. Film when oh, yeah. you've got Star mm-hmm. Wars two years before and then you got Alien the same year that they're both dirty, grungy, yeah. working class kind of film. This is utop- This is utopian sci-fi. Yeah. yeah, and so maybe that's what also kind of put people off, and that is they didn't want that anymore. They wanted something. Yeah. Because because bear in mind we're coming off of the Vietnam War, we're coming off of you know the Nixon administration, mm-hmm. Watergate, all that stuff, and so people wanted to be entertained, but they also wanted something to relate yeah. to. And yeah, and the world was getting ready for the imminent breakup of Kiss at this point. <laughs> Ooh. Heartbreaking. 
And they needed to go of, go see Star Wars to you know forget yeah. about their troubles of Kiss breaking yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> and of course we have to also mention Jaws as well, 1975. Mm-hmm. That people wanted to go to be entertained, and just yeah. the idea of the a poor driven <laughs> flick has been going the way of the dodo. So Robert Wise, he himself considered this great film a tour, but then this got critically reviled, and there's like a lot of interesting it's, things going on. He still isn't on the ship. He's still on the ship. <laughs> Look, and, see, and the, is that what you think works in the other Star Trek movies? And the fact that um, he gets that there's the a ship. story that well, moves well, along well, instead well, of looking at a that, ship but, for twenty well, minutes. It's not only that, but they're clearly utopian. They're still it's a little utopian mm-hmm. place, mm-hmm. but it's dealing with like even in utopia, there's an ugly side. Like Khan is an yeah. ugly side, yeah. you know, um, completely disregarding and destroying their careers in three to save their friend. Mm-hmm. That's a good that's, story. Yeah, I, don't care what, I, don't care, yeah. I don't care what anyone says. Like the, everyone says, oh, the odd Star Trek movies are awful. Star Trek Three is pretty mm-hmm. do, pretty good. I love Star Trek Three. I love me some Star Trek Three. It's great. And I'll actually say this: I think Star Trek Five is better than this movie. Ooh. Um. Ooh. That's a tough call. I honestly, I, 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 I honestly, I'll, I'll honestly you, don't know. I'll give you two reasons. One, a very base reason: these costumes aren't in Star Trek. 5. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And the second one, there are some good bits with um, Kirk, Spock, and McCoy in it. Like that one scene where um, Spock's uh, bastard brother um, does that thing. Cybok. Cybok. Yeah. He does that thing where he brings out all their painful memories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's actually a really good The bit. Star Trek V would have made a really good, um, okay, now a really memorable he original came. series he right there. finally came. There's the new bridge, complete with hanging legs. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, so Star Trek Five would have made a really good original series episode. When you know when you boil it down to its basics, but uh, I can see your junk, man. God damn it, these costumes! <laughs> oh, wait, wait, that guy stole Luke Skywalker's outfit. This, uh, Look at Uhura's. <laughs> Look at Uhura's afro, man. It's okay. It's just so weird seeing. Uh, this is again probably a nerd thing. It's so weird seeing Uhura not in red. That's actually. That's yeah, this color point. palette is terrible. It's it's tans yeah, and grays it's like, and it's weird because it kind of yeah. works with Sulu, but then again, Sulu's wearing a jacket. He's wearing one of those yeah. cool um, jackets that later on um, Picard would wear. <laughs> I wonder if George Takei really forced himself to smile whenever he <laughs> look at Shatner. <laughs> I'm getting paid for this, you bastard. But ah, oh, God, those costumes. Yeah, his they're wig. So bad. It's a battle of the wigs. <laughs> I think I think Shatner's wig finally won in part four. <laughs> no, actually, Shatner's wig won because he still has it on while Walter Kenning removed it. Oh, I like that. Like, it. That, that, lo- that looks almost exactly like the engine room from Voyager. Yeah. <laughs> like, almost exactly. Well, it is. They just used this. No, they <laughs> Why? Just get it over with. <laughs> Just have sex with the ship, right long, there. Okay, the, boring ass scenes of nothing happening. Are they treating the warp corn to like a phallic symbol? Maybe. Probably. William Shatner's there after all. Yeah. <laughs> Shatner's. Right okay, we don't need to see the elevator go all the way down. Yeah, yeah, we do. Oh, well, uh, here yeah, comes here comes the part of what used to be your favorite part of the movie. God, why'd you have to remind me of that shit? Now it's just ruined. But no, Stephen Collins is Woo! he's a really good actor. Mm-hmm. He has an interesting character in this movie where he's the captain, but Kirk has taken over, and now he's like, oh, it's not fair. He's a nice bunch. They're kind of be kind of button heads and stuff. Like that's interesting, and it has a character storyline that. Gene Roddenberry also rip again ripped off himself to use in Next Generation with see, Riker and uh, see, Counselor. You Troy. know the reason behind that though? Because it didn't work in this movie. Well, not only that, but this movie <laughs> is the result of um, when Paramount wanted to do their own TV show, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, not TV show, but TV network. Mm-hmm. Way before they did UPN. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was, they were going to have Star Trek Phase Two as like yeah. the flagship show. And this movie uses a lot of concepts from mm-hmm. that. Yeah, but apparently, the basic story for the movie Would've was the... supposed to be the pilot for Phase yeah. Two. And then when the, then when Close Encounters and Star Wars came out, and they're like, oh, oh. we need a we need a we yeah. need a sci-fi movie to make a billion dollars. Yeah, there's another and one they used going. It for this. There's another one going into the idea of like blue uh, blue collar working class. Mm-hmm. Kind of a t- approach to science fiction and fantasy, where you believe that you're part of the characters. The thing with this that doesn't work with it is that you don't really get into it as well as, oh. as much as the other films. And at, this, at this, distance, at this point, it's like two people fighting over the same girl. Yeah, yeah. 
It's a love triangle yeah. between yeah. between the Admiral, the Captain, and the Enterprise. Yeah, and uh, to <laughs> Kirk, it's this old, reliable, faithful woman, and to, um, what's his name, Decker? Decker, yes. Decker, it's a nice, young little ship. That's Why'd, so Jeff? Why'd you have to say that? <laughs> God damn it. So basically, they're talking about their dicks. <laughs> I mean, you know what's weird, also really weird? I don't, th- th- there's nothing wrong with the way this movie is shot or lit or anything, but why is all that blue? Because it would seem like, do you think it's supposed to represent how sterile it is? Like, you know, you got the, the blue and then the white, maybe that's what it's supposed to be? Because actually, I do admit, I do like that usage of color. I do like that's it, I just a good don't, point. I, I just don't, but you know what it also reminds me of? And I it doesn't don't, have a practical and I, use. And I don't think it's intentional, oh. it's, no, there's, there's no way it could be, it might be intentional on behalf of the other movie, but. I do all, like this part. All the blue reminds me of Abrams' Star Trek. Oh, that's a very good point. And I wonder if that there's no way it was intentional on either part. Obviously, obviously mm-hmm. this one there's no way it's intentional. Like no, no. thirty years from now we're gonna bring <laughs> it into a movie. I like this part. This is because this always like freaks me out. This this possibility. What if <laughs> things went wrong? And it shows you exactly why McCoy hates transporters. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> it's actually a very effective way in how it's like, oof, how it's how it's done. Where it's like it's very creepy. <laughs> It's, it's, like, a, it's, a, it's a nice kind of creepy little scene, but ultimately, like, what does it have to do with anything else that happens in the movie? Well, it's basically to, uh, get, other than it's to get Spock on the, the they ship. Need, they need a science officer. and yeah. Yeah. But really, that has... Spock just shows up anyway. Yeah. So it's like, it was like well, how, what a, what a, how convenient. We just happen to need a science officer, yeah. and Spock just happened. I mean, even if, even if their new science officer had lived and made it, okay, Spock so, still would have showed up, and they yeah. still would have let him be on the ship to yeah. do whatever the fuck he wants to do. And then, of course, um, what, a couple years later, they actually introduced another Falcon character, Savick, who turned out to um, mm-hmm. be a pretty good more, character, yeah. too. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff cut out about her. Like, um, originally, uh, there was, I think it was either in two or three, there's an aspect of her where she was half Vulcan. Oh, yeah. No, not half Vulcan, but half Romulan, half oh, yeah, Vulcan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And I think she was supposed to be the, the female Vulcan character in Star Trek VI. Yes, she was. But then they had to change it around for whatever reason. Because were they trying to get Kirstie Alley back, or was it, not, or sure. was it kind of decided that she wouldn't do that kind of betrayal to Spock? Well, she didn't even, you know, I'm not sure. But that makes it more interesting that she, this character that we know through the movies, mm-hmm. and then she betrays Spock, I think that's really interesting. Because she sees it, she sees the betrayal as logical. After you, after we banged on the Genesis planet, you never called Spock. So, you know, this hallway isn't all blue. Yeah! Like, and it looks a lot nicer, that's... Nice stainless steel. It looks like a stainless steel refrigerator. It's all over the place. Actually, it looks like the old wood grain that you put on set. I can see your fucking junk, Stephen Collins. These fucking costumes. Ugh. He's got a wedgie, that guy. Man. God. Did you ever listen to the clip of, of, of Shatner getting mad at that one guy for recording for the television series? And going, oh, please don't tell me how to do it. It sickens me. Sulu, Chekhov, Spock, sabotage the system. And the funny thing is, he complains like, I don't say sabotage. You say sabotage, I say sabotage. And it's true. In an episode of Star Trek, it's revealed, he said sabotage. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know, legitimately, I don't know if it's a Canadian thing or he's just being a dick or that's how he did it, but... Yeah, you know what that scene reminded me of? That the, the, that scene in Star Wars with the Death Star plan. Well, oh, that's a very good. Point. Were they revealing the Death Star plan? Yeah. I can shoot a womp rat. At point <laughs> I like. The, I like that one. That, the, the one book. actress. She's like, ah, ah. Mm, mm. Also, I like the guy in the back who's a who's a butt for a head. <laughs> The, the India. <laughs> There's an Indian in there. I didn't even notice that before. Oh, my God. I don't you know. Okay, you know what? I don't know if this is intentional, but when they get back to Sulu, look at the style he's wearing and tell me that doesn't look like a uh, a gi for our martial arts <laughs> stuff. Well, seriously, look at it. Next time he comes, oh, there on was straight, a Native American. Yeah, there's like a there's like a man and a woman like complete with like feathers in their hair and everything like. Like I mean I mean like, there's nothing wrong with putting Native Americans in your movie, but like. Look! It's like a stereo. It's, it's, it's like a, a complete look, stereotype. Look at Sulu. Isn't that a gee? Yes! Oh, wow, yeah. God, so this is, the, this this is really that, the best takes they had of this guy? And only the, it's weird because every, everything else looks so crisp, but then they get to the video screen, it's like substandard definition. Is this the same fart cloud from Fantastic Four 2? <laughs> 
Let's just avoid the Fantastic Four film series right oh now. God. Well. <laughs> Wait, wait, there's another Vulcan right in this crew. Yeah. Didn't Stephen, didn't uh, Decker just say there are no Vulcans available? There's one right there. <laughs> Maybe he's not available. Red alert. When I said I'm not available, when I said I'm not available, Decker, I didn't mean it like that. See, where is, I, the, where is this camera in relation to, how, how are they getting these shots to transmit? Um, obviously, uh, welcome, to, welcome to the world of cinema. Yeah. <laughs> And also, uh, uh, wouldn't it be a lot more um, tense if it just cut out? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, really. You know, the way, one thing I like about this is how pretty it looks. It's like, it's, 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 it's obviously, you know, destruction, people dying and all that, but there's actually something Oh, no. Kind of Run. <laughs> like, Run. let's get out of here, Scoob! <laughs> uh, uh. I can make it. I think I'm going to make it. It would be so. I don't remember, I don't remember this that well, but it would be so great <laughs> if he did make it. It's like, uh, oh, thank God. Oh, God. Did he make it? Uh, nope. Nope. See, where's the camera? Wouldn't the camera have disintegrated with the rest of the uh, space station? It's what? like the black box. So. Or maybe it's a camera with a uh, very long lens. So yeah. <laughs> it is the future after all. Yeah. You were off. What's with that one? Afro that? off. <laughs> Do something! Somebody died! No, just... It's like, um, it's, well, we're the fucked. Thing is, the thing is, they don't, even necessarily look, like, they don't necessarily look sad. They look like they all were playing ball on the Enterprise and they broke uh, Kirk's price vase. <laughs> like, oh shit, what is he going to do? Kirk always said, don't play ball on the Enterprise. Is that the guy from Mask? <laughs> <laughs> the Rocky Dennis on the crew of the Enterprise? See, and now he's back. Now pajamas. he's wearing pajamas like everyone else. Uh, bye, bye, awesome suit. <laughs> he, was, he was, you know, swishing around there. He looked totally. Wait, even the captain's back. chair looks so lame. Yeah. Aaliyah, I love her music. Yay! So she's bald. Yeah. That's, that's, who cares? Wasn't this film kind of about sex, if you think about it? Is, no, isn't every movie about sex when you think about it? That's true. Haven't you seen the Oogie Loves movie? It's, it's all about sex. Actually, that could be a good <laughs> Now the question is, which one is going to get it? Okay, you, know what, you know what makes these costumes look even worse? The symbols on the chest. Yeah. Oh, oh. They oh, look like iron-on you yeah. know, patches. It's just shitty. Doesn't her hair kind of look like uh, Blackula? <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, it was I, I, right I, around the same time period. <laughs> See, the thing is, I can't even notice her costume, her uh, hair, just because I, I, Uhura should be in red. I mean, I'm okay. sorry, but it's just I'm maybe I'm just too used to it. Is this Grizzly Adams about to show up? Doctor, <laughs> that's Doctor Grizzly Adams to you. Look at that gold chain. He's such a pimp. <laughs> He looks like he just came from the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> He's got the nice big huge belt buckle and the gold chain and the deep V. He looks like a Jewish movie producer. From <laughs> <laughs> yes. like, he just, you know all those Paramount I mean, executives that greenlit this movie? Just dress them like it that. Would be so, it'd be so great if like, in between scenes he would take that gold <laughs> cap off his necklace and there's a Star of David right there. <laughs> he came from his 12 week run of Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> You know I'm just a doctor, right? Ooh. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Badly. Give me your hand. It pauses so long you can drive a truck through. <laughs> God, say something! It's just these long, awkward pauses. It's like you're oh. friends, right? It's like you've known each other, you've been through some things. It's, it's like you, even the look on, on um, Kelly's face, DeForest Kelly's face right here is just like, this is awkward as well, shit. Well, no, it'd be like this, it'd be like this. Cameron, how was your day yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
still wait. I forgot. I forgot. This chip is still in the dock. It's still in the dock. I haven't <laughs> left. We haven't even left space dock yet. <laughs> and uh, still going, still going. Maybe they just need to warm up the engine. Yeah. Oh, what happened to uh, Sulu's cool katana gi? <laughs> Well, he's you know he's on duty now. He has to oh my. he has to wear his regular uniform. Oh goodness! This is... So apparently these two hate each other. Well, they, like <laughs> Shatner and George Takei doesn't make any bones oh, about man. it. He despises him. Still hasn't you know gotten over all that. But, but you can, but you can never too. tell when you watch these movies. That's yeah. how good of actors they are. Oh, and also just to let everyone know, Cameron went to the shitter. So <laughs> yeah, because the people listening are like they really need to know that. What? I don't know. You never know. It's like, why? Why isn't the camera guy talking anymore? You want to frozen for the camera guy? <laughs> so I guess this is supposed to emulate like 2001 in a way, yeah, where it's you know it these, is. and it's this, and this big exactly. bombastic score that sounds great, and like these slow moving ships. So, but, but here's the question: Why is it that 2001 works and this doesn't? Oh, well, at least well, for I, me I'll, I, as well. I'll come out and say I don't. I don't think 2001 is all that good of a movie. I'll just, I'll just flat out say. Well, which do you prefer? It's what between this and two thousand one. Yeah, I guess two thousand one. Okay, but because two thousand one has, I, I really like the stuff where it's the caveman at the beginning. Yeah, I love the stuff where it's the computer, the how the computer taking over the ship and, and killing the guys. Oh, so this is those sections so, are good. So but everything is, else in between is boring as shit. Hmm. So right here, this is what warp drive looks like <laughs> in Star Trek: The Motion Picture. <laughs> I think I think the reason what what works about two thousand one, especially these sequences, is that it seems like how it's cut that it's it seems that it is cut to the, to the music or that the images themselves are very arresting. So there's a moment you know with the 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 stewardess is like why walking. do we need to watch this door close like, for five minutes? Like, so we see that guy squeeze oh, in. Yeah. See, this is a nice yeah. shot. Even but my it dog just, keeps just going. Even my dog just yawns. Just <laughs> <laughs> right, here, why do we need to say this? Yeah, see, it's so so. Two thousand one is extremely successful. This big, huge movie, Star Wars, and is and, huge. and it was and it made a lot of money. And Star Wars comes out, and it's huge. And instead of aping off the success of Star Wars, you decide to go more for two thousand one when people are craving more Star Wars. And I can kind of see it, where Roddenberry would want to go more two thousand one, mm-hmm. but at the same time, there's no reason you couldn't take and I think I think you, you honestly need to find Ra- a I think I think balance. Like honestly, Wrath of Khan found that balance. Yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. Because it had all the action. But of course it found that balance after Paramount took away creative control for the feature films away from Gene Roddenberry. You know, and you know, maybe if you know George Lucas had something like that, the prequels would be a bit better. <laughs> that's why. So, honestly, so same thing. I'll, I'll, I'll oh, give you this. Pretty, you can say you can say whatever you want about Star Trek: The Motion Picture. You can say whatever you want about the Star Wars prequels. Same thing about these movies. The music is so oh, yeah. fucking good. The music this is the best part of all these of all these kind of movies. Yeah, the music's great. Oh, there's only one piece of Star Wars music I actually dislike, and that's the special edition version of uh, no two actually the special edition version of the si- of the Snipe Snoo- Snoodle song. Oh yeah. god! And uh, the music they use in the special editions after the destruction of the other Death Star instead of the because uh, I don't oh, care what Ewok. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't care what anybody says. I love yep <laughs> No, that's great. Yes, <laughs> And what makes that sequence even creepier is the fact that the they're you, they're banging on heads. Yeah, <laughs> and they're using the human bones they got from stormtroopers. Using a xylophone. <laughs> are you sure it was the human bones? Those are human. That's a human leg bone. One of them is using. We'll have to we'll have to watch Return of the Jedi oh, right God. before uh, the new Star Trek movie or if the new Star, Star Wars Trek movie comes out. If only we knew somebody that had all the Star Wars movies in HD, but without the uh, special edition stuff. Do we know anyone like that? I got. <laughs> No, I don't know anyone. I, I have I have no <laughs> doubt when the new star when it gets closer to December and the new Star Wars movie is about to come out, they they I'm have no doubt they will release all the reg, all the original editions, all the special every yeah. single version of Star Wars they could possibly release on video. They will, yeah, just because they want to make as much money as humanly so Richard, possible. So Richard Roundtree is a member of the Star Trek staff. <laughs> <laughs> This I kind of like, like those engineering yeah, suits. Yeah, that, that's cool. the only good costume design they kept from uh, for Starfleet. Oh, that's true. Yeah, between for, for all the movies. Yeah. 
Because it's like, oh, they're like supposed to be like kind of radiation suits, I yeah. guess, because they're in engineering or whatever. Or there might be a possibility yeah. something might go wrong and they have to put on a helmet and turn oxygen on if they go, you know, or they go flying out of space or screw it. And that would have that was the LSD. I, I still think of uh, oh no the the biggest LSD LSD when they get into is still the coming up. Yeah. Oh yeah, we. So, uh, I see these. Uh, They've gone plaid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I keep thinking of Spaceballs because it totally copied off that. It was great. It's the closest thing to a seatbelt you'll ever see in, in Star Trek. What well, we did see in Star Trek Into, Into Darkness, they had that one. Oh, that's belt, right. But they that's got right. that from Star Trek Nemesis, which from a deleted scene from that. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I thought that was a nice little nod, even though <laughs> Nemesis is considered one of the worst Star Trek. Movies. It's I still yeah. like that. It's uh, it is what it is. I th- wasn't Nemesis made by a guy who hated Star Trek? He didn't hate it. He just never seen it before. He just wasn't. A well, fan. you could say the same thing with J.J. Abrams, but that first Star Trek movie is pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm really happy he's working on I think, Star Wars. So. I think everyone is way too hard on his first Star Trek movie. They they say, oh, and all it is in, is action. Like, no, there's a lot of action in the first in, in Abrams' first Star Trek movie, but there is a lot of character it, stuff in there. It, yeah, oh yeah, because yeah. the 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 story has to be simple because you have to reintroduce all yeah. the characters and reintroduce the world and and all this stuff. So mm-hmm. the story has to be more simplistic. Yeah. But then with Into Darkness, you have the chance to. And they didn't. Go more in depth, and, and they really didn't. No. It was... Instead, they just decided to do a dime throw version of Wrath of Khan. Yeah. Which is so stupid, because if, if you keep the movie exactly the way it is, but just not make him Khan, like make him an android or some other yeah. kind or of use the actual superior name, being. Or use the actual name way. that they were covering him with. Yeah. Like, and, I, it's like, just, and, it, ap- and it changes absolutely nothing if, I mean, if you I, I, don't I, make him Khan in that movie. I mean, oh, I, oh, yeah, spoiler alert. Benedict Cumberbatch is caught in Star Trek in the Darkness. We and the apologize. internet threw a bitch fit about it <laughs> because it was a white guy playing a, um Indian guy. With, and of course, nobody had a problem with Even though way. Ricardo Maltaban is, is Spanish. His Hispanic and, and played in... Oh, yeah. Well, I want to point out we're talking about another movie during probably the most exciting part of the entire film. <laughs> okay, I don't get why... Okay, I understand why the um, Enterprise is all wavy. I don't know why they're wavy inside because technically yeah, they okay. shouldn't be because that... That's not how. That's not how motion works. It's, they're just trying to. They're just trying to make it exciting in any way possible. Okay, that, that's not. Working. Imagine if this was done now, but in three D. It yeah. would be horrible in three D. Yeah. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> Wait. Okay. So. The, so why are they, why are okay why are they in slow motion? Because they're in a wormhole. I don't know. They're trying to make it suspenseful and it's just failing miserably. But if wormholes are bad, how come Deep Space Nine? Ugh. Deep Space Nine is an awesome show. Deep Space Nine is all right. It, it has its moments. I'm, I not, I'm not a huge fan of it overall, but there are some really good episodes. I think in there. I, it's weird because I actually gauged the, my enjoyment of Deep Space Nine by Avery Brooks, Brooks' hairstyle. <laughs> it's like when he when he when he has no beard and his, he has a full head of hair. That's eh, okay. When he uh, gets the beard, oh, this is getting good. Shaves his head, beard. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, what just blew up? What's the that the asteroid Superman? and somehow the wormhole dissipated. I don't know. That's not how space this works. This movie makes no fucking sense. E- even if, you know, you can make up whatever science crap you want and, and explain it, it still makes no sense. Woo, that was... Oh, thank God we got out of that. Ugh. Hey, look, a bunch God, of nothing. Who cares? Like this movie... <laughs> There was another thing that that was that it was in Into Darkness and sucked. Hmm. How they um, as soon as they were stumped, they went, "Hey, let's call Old Spock." He'll oh know. God, that was it's the like, worst. What that, a great way to undermine your new crew. There, there are things in that movie that that I will defend, and 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 a lot of things in it that that I'll like, even though they're not really Star Trek. But that scene where they call Old Spock. And he's like, I have agreed not to tell you anything about your potential future, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Like, God, that scene is so horrible. I also genuinely Ugh. don't. I genuinely don't like the Klingon sequence. I like the ship. I like, it. I like the ship chase, but when they get down to it, and they have the actual fight. Yeah. No, I thought, I thought I that mean, was fine. The best part of that is Khan. The best part of that scene is Khan. When he just Khan. starts blowing yeah. people. <laughs> because I was thinking, you know, because let, let's face it, they, that was a horribly kept secret. Mm. And it's, and I figured that in J.J. Abrams' world, that is exactly how they would in, reintroduce Khan. Just coming in. Blowing people away. Yeah. 
And I love it. That's a great reintroduction for Khan. Coming in, blowing everyone away, and then essentially surrendering. Whoa, look at that love bed that Kirk has in there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, it's of huge. course, it's Kirk. Yeah. Got enough chips there, David? Yes. <laughs> I had to get more chips, because why? Uh-oh, Kirk doesn't know his ship the way he used to. Exactly. Like This is the kind of character dynamic that makes him the most interesting part of the movie. But it's just wasted in this fucking film. Because Look at that computer. Is that supposed to be a computer console? I'm sorry, I'm Actually, it's a Jolly oh. Rancher dispenser. <laughs> standing, standing, standing. Competing with me, Stop competing with me. You're an ass. <laughs> two and a half years. Two and a half years. That's how long it's been since he's been on the Enterprise. You do realize it's James T. fucking Kirk, and he's like the best guy in the universe to have on this mission. Mm -hmm. Like he can't see past that. <laughs> it's going to be at least another seventy years before Jean Luc Picard's born. <laughs> Man, even in his Starfleet uniform, McCoy looks like he's getting ready to fuck at a disco. <laughs> so, yeah, I love I, one of my. I'd probably say my favorite episode of Deep Space Nine is when they go back in time to the Trouble with Triples yeah. episode. I would oh, love, yeah. I would love, I would would have loved it if, like, in uh, Enterprise or some other TV version where they would travel in time to this period and they would have to wear these costumes and these ugly '70s sets and kind of make fun of it tongue in cheek, like they did with the original series a couple times. Mm -hmm. And this is stuff supposed like to be that. advancement. So, yeah, exactly. Do that with Star Wars, Hans, he's in a booze starfighter. You know, it might look better, but it just doesn't look right. <laughs> oh, you know what? Okay, a couple notes from that, since we're just talking about Star Wars, a couple of notes from that sequence right here mm -hmm. in the score reminded me of uh, of Han Solo and the Princess, that bit of mm -hmm. score from John Williams. It sounded a little bit da 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 mm -hmm. Can I hear that a little? See, like, they're trying to play uh, with this theme of him wanting to recapture his youth, which is what they play up big time in Wrath of Khan. Yeah. But it works so much better in Wrath of Khan than it does Because in, in Wrath of Khan, he kind of comes across as defeated mm -hmm. in the first frame. Like, I'm old, Spock, I know. Yeah. Spock, I know. Like, I'm, I'm stuck in this school teaching these brats. And like, <laughs> it's like, my ship has been turned into a private school. My ship has been turned into barracks for children. <laughs> You know, I think another issue with this film, because I know we made fun of like when it comes to the hairstyles and what have you, but you do automatically think 70s, but at least whenever I watch like the old you know, Star Trek episodes, I always think, okay, I know it's made in the 60s, but it did feel a little bit timeless. That's the thing. Even with the other Star Trek movies, it feels a little more timeless. Yeah. You watch this movie and it just screams it's so 1970s. It's so yeah. dated. Yeah. yeah. Well, except, of course... You know, the, the Star Trek Four, but it's dated due to the fact that they had to go like, yeah. to San Francisco oh, yeah. in, in the, the 80s. characters themselves are still dressed in like a f timeless future guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's Spock's ugly ass ship. And a Death Star shot. Actually, it kind of looks like a, oh, Reliant. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, right, they, it uh, also looks like it would be perfect for water skiing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know the story? Okay, so oh. I guess <laughs> that bottom half is just going to float around in space forever. Yeah, I guess. Is Spock's family... It's like space junk. Spock's family rich or something? Maybe. In the future, everyone's rich because oh, money yeah. doesn't exist. Capitalism is evil. There is no money in the future. Like, did you know we only work to better ourselves. Cameron, did you know the story? Which about is never going to happen, by the way. Sorry, yeah. Gene Roddenberry. About the Reliance? <laughs> uh huh. Like, you know how they came up with the design of it? It was upside down. It was upside it was down. It was upside down. Yep. <laughs> then when he signed off on it, he signed on like the bottom part. So when they looked at it, they're like, "Oh, is it supposed to be this way?" Now the music suggests something exciting. It's just like this boring flat angle. Yeah. It's just I want. That. I do love. It. He's just like fuck you, Chekhov. <laughs> like, I don't have time for you, Rusky. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a, what would a, a better, more visually exciting shot would be um, from behind of Chekhov waiting, 
and then shot at his face, like kind of anxious. Mm -hmm. And then the door opened, she started at the bottom, and then crane up. Spock! And Spock! Spock! He looks really. He looks older in this movie than he does in Wrath of Khan. He looks just pissed off to be there, and he's like, <laughs> I hate this. Decker hates hates Kirk. Oh Spock, sure, take your old chair, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. Outfit. Now look at now look at this angle. The, uh, hopefully they'll go back to it on Kirk, where you see a close up of Kirk, and then it's look right there. What the hell? Like why is that alien in the background in focus? Why is Rocky Dennis <laughs> in like like you see those kind of shots in in movies, especially from the seventies and eighties, yeah. where they want to focus on the background and the foreground, and it's fuzzy in the middle. But there was absolutely no reason for that to happen in that shot. Like, no one gives a shit about the ugly alien in the background. See? He's just, like, leaning up. Like, well, he's too cool for school. He's like, eh, I, whatever, I Spock's here. I didn't do my homework. Fuck you guys. Ugh. Fuck you, Mom. Oh, there's Gene Roddenberry's wife. He's got to get his wife that paycheck. Does that alien do anything? No. The Rocky no. Dennis? He, th there is a very small, deleted portion in the director's cut where when Kirk first comes onto the bridge and he tells him he's going to be taking command, after he leaves that alien guy, he's like, what about Captain Decker? It's not fair to him, blah 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 and Ahura says something like uh, you know, shut up asshole our, my dialogue's better than what was written, but uh, she basically says, hey, our, our odds for surviving this mission just tripled or, you know, something like that. That's a nice little added on scene, but yeah. Say what you want with Other the, than that, he does absolutely nothing. Yeah, say what He's you just want. in focus in the background for no Ever reason. Ever since they took the satellite dish off of the Enterprise, they can no longer get direct TV. <laughs> say what you will with the J.J. Abrams Star Trek films, but when they introduce like an alien in the Star Trek crew, they use that alien. Is Wait, the is, that, is that the bartender from Love Boat? <laughs> Love Boat, The Next Generation. Have you seen that? <laughs> yeah. On Saturday Night Live? It's great. Is this the first time we've heard a Captain's Log entry? I think so. Okay. In this I love that they kept uh, that handle. They kept it for uh, the J.J. Abrams yeah. bridge. I thought that was a nice little touch. See, and he was in a better suit. He's got, he's got the, the, the really, really short sleeves. And the really hairy arms. Showing off those hairy guns. Maybe what's disappointing is that, that is that Kirk doesn't punch anything in the movie. <laughs> Maybe what's disappointing is that nothing happens in the movie. Wow, because I was so... I wasn't sure if they were going to make it or not. He looks like he's going to go on a cruise. <laughs> oh, yeah, Love Boat, the next year. <laughs> yeah. The Enterprise. Damn, look at that furniture. Oh, God. It's it's the same furniture you would see in a seventies arcade. Yeah. yeah. Reporting as ordered, Captain. Vulcans don't sit down. Because he raised his eyebrows all the time in the he show. Raised, oh my god, he raised his eyebrows. He does that in the show. I want to point out that that Shatner is actually a couple months older than than Nimoy, born the same year. <laughs> Who looks like he's in better shape? <laughs> in this movie, it's Shatner. In this movie, they're they're, they're both in fine shape. Nowadays, oof. And but it's weird because in two, Nimoy I think genuinely looks younger than Shatner in two. <laughs> Just more makeup, maybe. <laughs> the, Sit the, down. Good God. So wait, they had an entire scene dedicated to him saying, will you please sit down? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he just knew that it was V'ger and that he's headed like, I don't know. No. Well, Spock, Still makes no sense well, whatsoever. Here's, here's my question though, when it comes to this, when it comes to developing this plot, wouldn't it have been a lot less time consuming if we saw Spock at the beginning going like, you know, oh, Spock's here. And then he says, well, this is what's going on. What? And have it where then it occurs, the event. Where he kind of drives the plot 
forward yeah. more than... You could have done that earlier yeah, and cut a bunch sense. of stuff out. Yeah, but then you wouldn't get 15 minutes of Spurk of, uh, of Kirk I... Spurk? Yeah, Spurk. <laughs> you wouldn't have gotten 15 minutes of Kirk I fucking the Enterprise. Oh, that's good, true. Spurk. Oh, my God. Spurk. You that, see, was, this, that was a Spurg moment. With how long and drawn out all this crap is, like it, it, it would have worked better as a pilot for yeah. the new Star Trek TV show. Wait, wait, but when you second. stretch it out like this, I just noticed something. Is is he wearing eyeliner? I can't Luke see. Kirk? Shatner wearing eyeliner? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I worked out. Be damn surprised. it! The stuff they're wearing looks like it should belong in Logan's Run. Oh God! Yeah, it's yeah, a good point. Far superior movie to Star Trek, the, the motion picture. I, I guess he just wants to show how manly he is. <laughs> no, think of it. Look, short sleeve shirt, showing off his guns, you know, out the chest, and you see McCoy, and he's wearing like this long sleeve shirt. Oh, red alert! Now, now it's exciting, guys. I am on the edge of my seat. I'm, I'm going to move back because it's not very comfortable. Wait, now Sulu's wearing the white shirt. Yeah. It's... If if that shit Shatner gets to be comfortable, so must, so must I. <laughs> Do you think they switch shirts? Like, okay, now in this scene you wear this one. Just give me that shirt. Yeah, it's just like, just randomly just throwing uniforms out. Like, eh, whatever, this fit? Yeah, just wear that. They weren't paying attention that day. It's, it's like, I understand it's not supposed to be a military. Like, Gene Roddenberry's very adamant. It's like, no, they're explorers, not military. But... I mean, you gotta have some kind of uniform, uniform consistency, kind of something. Does that mean Roddenberry hated the uh, Star Trek Two? Oh yeah, movie? I remember. I remember watching the special features for Wrath of Khan and and the the director Nicholas Mayer. He was like, he, was, he he said like, I understand it's not military, but it's at least as militaristic as like the Coast Guard or something that has to look somewhat naval in a way, like you're. Kind of in well, the na- in the like, space navy well, kind of. Well, wasn't a uh, part of Roddenberry's inspiration for Star Trek a Horatio Hornblower? Yeah, yeah. and that's naval. Yeah. And I would argue that pretty much every other alien race you see, maybe except short of the Vulcans, look way more militaristic in their uniforms than Starfleet in any form, especially the Klingons. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going to, to point my finger at you. Okay. <laughs> I wonder if the reason he likes Illyria so much is because she's 12. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Boo. Uh, Boo. Uh. I wonder if he could just do a super cut of all the times people look confused in this movie. <laughs> And just call it audience reaction to Star Trek the motion picture. Have you ever heard that um, idea that V'ger is connected to the Borg? What? You never heard really? that idea? No. That um, the Borg is what made it like yeah, so technologically yeah, advanced? The, yeah, the, uh, the satellite or whatever uh, ran into the Borg. The Borg um, looked at it and then sent it back. Like kind of gave it to the, abil- yeah. the ability to grow as, as a living machine yeah. kind of thing? I guess that makes sense. I think it's because you never really see the inside of it in a way. Yeah. So I, I mean, also yeah. think it's just an attempt to to make anything in this movie seem more seem interesting. interesting. <laughs> hey, did you know that Star Trek the Motion Picture has the Borg in it? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you heard the uh, thought that maybe in Star Trek Three they're going to try and use the Borg? Yeah, they're yeah. Okay, I'm not. They're sure. they're going to ape off anything that general audiences can recognize. But see. Uh, I, I would love to see if the next Star Trek... I would love to see them go into the Mirror Universe. Yeah, that would and be see, awesome. And see, yeah, and see the new Star Trek, the, the Chris Pine and, and Simon Pegg and all them versus the evil version see, of themselves. See, I, I want to see, see that so bad. I would bad. love to see a feature-length thing of, you know, crew versus crew of the Mirror Universe. Yeah, I'm honestly, that'd be great. I'm, I'm honestly surprised Next Generation never did a movie version for the Mirror Universe since they never did it the entire mm-hmm. time they were on TV. It was all confined to books. Yeah. I mean, because I, I don't like... It's just like I would never want to see um, the Next Generation crew fight. I love that delayed <laughs> reaction from Chekhov. I like and never... Shatner is just like, medic. Get a medic in here. See? <laughs> <laughs> like, He's so uninterested. Like, you know what that yeah, reminds whatever. me of? 
Part time. Part time. But I would never want to see the original the original crew go up against the Borg, just I would never want to see the next generation crew go up against Khan. Yeah. Like the Borg is Picard's Khan. Yeah. Which is why they use them in a feature film, just like just like it's oddly Khan enough, the second Star Trek next generation too. movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, put, I'm the one putting my arm around Nathan. Yeah. Oh, oh. Ooh, Making a Nathan sandwich over here. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I wonder if the script was rewritten to match Nimoy's I don't give a shit delivery. <laughs> Apparently the script was being rewritten as they were shooting it. Oh, that, yes. Yeah, hey, um, Nimoy doesn't really give a shit. What are we going to do? I'll just say Spock's purging all human emotion from him. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to all this dialogue, like, here it comes, our shields can have another attack, and the, the dialogue would totally work in, like, a J.J. Abrams version, where everything's moving fast, and, and it's exciting and suspenseful, but for this, it's just, like, these flat, ugly angles. Didn't they say something was coming five minutes working. ago? Yeah. Okay, actually, that's working a little bit better. The cuts were a little bit quicker. But not anymore when I start speaking, and they... Shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> You're making this movie slower. <laughs> Oddly enough, we're only 15 minutes into this movie. <laughs> How long have we been into this film? I don't know. I don't that's know. the thing. See, that's the thing about boring movies. You lose all sense of time. God, gonna... it, takes, it takes every character so long just to say Wait, something. I don't understand. Why did he have to get up? And then turn. It was just for dramatic. Hero purposes. shot. It's dramatic, I guess. Hero shot, yeah. I swear, a movie like this is such an anomaly in space and time, it would fuck up the DeLorean. <laughs> it also fucks up for people who want to get into Star Trek. I remember when the, the, the 2009, the J first J.J. Abrams one came out, and the boss, my boss at the place I was working at, he was like, "Yeah, I want." I was like, I, "He's like, you're a Star Trek fan, aren't you?" I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Yeah, I, I rented that first movie to kind of prepare myself for the new one coming out, and it was so bad." And I was like, "Which one did you watch? Did it was it called the motion picture?" And he's like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "Oh my god, you made the worst mistake." It's like the same people who like don't know Star Wars, don't get into it. They're like, "Oh, I guess I'll watch the first one, at, quote episode one." Because they don't know, and they see, and they're like, "Oh, this sucks!" Like, Let's see, my why, why is this such a big deal? My, like, you know what really uh, gets me about um, episode, episode one and all the prequels and all that? You know what they always say about Star Trek movies that they're meant for all ages, the entire family. And the thing is, that only works for the original trilogy because the story is really simple. Oh, the Empire is bad. Why are they bad? Because they just blew up a fucking planet to make a point. Oh, okay. Or why, is, why is Darth Vader bad? Well, he'll choke somebody if they disagree with him. Oh, well, he is bad. Meanwhile, in the prequels, well, why is the Trade Federation bad? Well, you know, politics, 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 yeah. politics, yeah. politics. <laughs> and then you start to go, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Why, why does it make them bad? Maybe they're good guys. And then Luke was like, well, that's the point. We're trying to create confusion because they might actually be good and the other people are really bad. And then you go, but wait a minute. We're making essentially a science fiction fantasy romp. We're supposed to have fun. Well, we're not. No, we're not. not. And, then, <laughs> and here's the really weird thing: in that, and all that complexity that they're trying to go for in the prequels, they use such idiotic simplicity alongside the complexity to the point where this doesn't work. In the originals, everything is so simple, so they create the complex relationships, or at least not even complex relationships, but deeper relationships. Like Han and Leia, that's not necessarily a complex relationship, but it feels real. It's true. No, also well, I'm sorry we're not talking about Star Trek right now, but this part's really God. fucking I, 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 I think the sequence goes on longer than the It's a screensaver! <laughs> it, They're this, looking at the Enterprise's screensaver This is right the now. LSD sequence here you mentioned earlier. Like, this uh, is... So I'm assuming at this point they're trying to top like the, 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 the Jupiter and be, or the Saturn and Beyond I, sequence. I guess. From, it's like... Come on. From, uh... Like, was Gene Roddenberry really like, you know what? Kids are going to want to drop some, some acid and come into this movie just for the sequence. We're going to make a lot of money off that. Like, God, it's so fucking boring. Shatner's just sitting in his seat wondering when he's going to get to make out with some green alien space <laughs> babes. 
I mean, I guess stuff like that, this would look... I mean, this was like the tail end of the disco era. She's praying So, like, this cool, this trippy, like, sci-fi looking stuff might have been fun to watch, you but... Want, you want to make better? Uh. This, this movie featured Finny Barbarino. <laughs> this movie is actually what started Scientology. <laughs> this movie inspired Scientology. Yeah, they're going after... The, <laughs> right now, they're in the Thetan field. This show would have been better if it did feature like that kind of guy. Like, hey, what's going on here? Hey, that's a pretty good story, this one. <laughs> and they keep going. I am V'ger. <laughs> God, just never end. And now they got the strobe light club <laughs> effects going on. That looks like a robot anus. They, <laughs> they really did. Because, you... because you know exactly what, what robot, robot anus. anuses look like. Um, yeah, I've seen This Ain't Robocop Triple X, <laughs> okay? That's what I, that's my reaction right now. <laughs> God, this, a super cut of people looking oh, confused man. in this movie would be 30 minutes. <laughs> nothing and nothing... And more nothing. I mean, it's and it's supposed to and be more strobe lights. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be an exciting sequence, but it ultimately it doesn't work because it has to be said the images themselves aren't they're not scary, they're not um, no. enticing in terms of of, of, of of whether you're going to be scared, entertained, yeah. what have you. It's just slowly, 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 yeah. slowly. Cut to them going. <gasps> So, so you can make a cut of them and reacting the to anything. And, and now the great and powerful space cantaloupe. <laughs> It's like so. So now they've made it through the cloud. Is that what they've? Is that what all that was? Hey, remember that in sequence in Wrath of Khan where they're stuck in the cloud and it's really exciting because yeah. it's life or death. What the fuck am I watching? And Bones comes on just for absolutely well, why, no reason wait, whatsoever. Hold on, why is Chekhov in sexy disco gear now? I guess he had to change after his hand got fucked up. I don't know. I this makes a, no sense. I want a pomegranate now. <laughs> I just realized she has a widow's peak. It is Blackula. <laughs> I am so jealous of Spock's light break, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I thought Paul Ryan had a bad widow's peak. Good lord. <laughs> Captain, I just made the Enterprise on my light break. <laughs> I wonder if by the end of this movie they're all going to be wearing sexy disco uniforms. <laughs> I, I, see, there's so much sexual tension in this scene. I just imagine they're all just going to get naked and have sex. It is the 70s. Yeah. Using space coke. Space, space coke? coke. <laughs> he looks Okay, next time you see um, uh, Decker look straight on, tell me you don't think he looks a little cross-eyed. <laughs> I'm just dead serious. Why is Bones there? Well, did and he... now he just leaves. <laughs> he showed up okay. for like a minute to look around, okay. and then he just leaves. To be, to be absolutely fair, didn't Bones just jump on the bridge constantly on the show? He did. To be well, I guess that's fair. accurate but to the, the television. But, show, but then. here's the thing: when he would jump up on the bridge, he would fucking talk. A lot of the times, it would be Kirk going to sick bay to talk yeah. to Bones, not so much the other way. But yeah, it's just ugh, God. And Spock would follow Kirk on. Come on, Daddy. <laughs> You know, in a weird way, this kind of does remind me of Alien, though, and how the, the you know, like how that one's like darker, but this one's more like brightly colored and blues and such. I thought that was very kind of interesting. So here's the here's the weird thing, if because that about that Borg theory, if the Borg hold, you know, if they, that was just you know, obviously it's um, something that I guess has been used in books and stuff. If it is somehow was at one point considered, you know, Star Trek canon, how much? work did the Borg fucking do on Voyager? <sighs> or has V'ger just been assimilating everything like the Borg? Like, were they, like, they didn't well, kill the, anything, because doesn't... what I kind of gather, like, when V'ger was traveling, it would amass all this information and whatnot from where, Voyager. as it would travel, like and just Borg. kind of assimilate it to itself, like instead of assimilating it? I don't, I don't know. This movie makes my head hurt. I so it's one of those movies where I'll... I'll I'll watch it every once every like couple of years just to like remind, remind myself. myself. Yeah. 
Because like, I watch Star Trek all the time. I love Star Trek, but... God, this fucking movie. Yeah, weird way. This is the kind of film that you put on. Like, let's say... You this gotta, is the you kind of clean. You gotta clean the house, right? You put this on in the background, so you're cleaning, this and then the you look, and it's, oh, the film's still going on. Yeah. You're cleaning. This is it's like look, background oh, noise. Yeah. This is the kind of movie that you put on to fall asleep, because I'm actually getting tired. <laughs> That's not Eat exactly. more nachos. Yeah. I'll wake you up. Yeah. <laughs> Why are there so many lights on? I don't know, because I... How does it have lights on in space? Okay, now we're going on to transformer mode. <laughs> Michael Bay Star Trek. Oh, it's Michael Bay Star Trek the motion picture. <laughs> At least it'd be interesting. It'd be, it'd be a lot more interesting to watch. That's it. Sure. Probably actually, if you think about this, if this film had a, a, a an, an overhaul when it came to editing, do you think the film would probably be like ninety minutes long? Do you are you saying that you want to recut? The I movie? wish it was ninety minutes long. Good do, God. Do I want to recut the film? Eh, nah. <laughs> I dare not do. Then that. don't tease us, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you know, okay, you want to want to cut th- two seconds off of Takei's shot, so it would just be him reacting instead of just like, <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck am I looking at? Oh my! I'm trying to remember. Does anyone know recall if this film had a lot of Gene Roddenberry's influence? Like, Robert, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Roddenberry's all over this movie. And just like you know, because Robert Wise is this director who is, he is like. A fabulous director in terms of if getting like what to cut, what not to cut, yeah. that sort of thing. So you just wonder. But you no, know, Roddenberry had complete control yeah. over the story and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like because 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 the thing is, when uh, it comes to Robert Wise, was he was a film editor before he was a director. In particular, he, a fi- I can't imagine a film editor editing yeah. this. And the thing is, Ro- this goes to you, Robert Wise was the film editor on Citizen Kane. <laughs> so you've edited what many this... consider to be the greatest film of all time, and you've directed. This, which has, it has, real. I get it. It's big. big. <laughs> but the, I, I, I will sort of come. Okay, to look, his, he's, he's cross-eyed. Yeah, did you see it? I did not. I, I was not paying attention. I thought. But I, I will sort of come to his defense in terms of the the movie and this movie in post production because there was so much of this stuff they had to make. Yeah. It got really rushed. Yeah. And they like like the movie was finished like just a couple of days. Before it was to premiere, yeah. Which like nowadays isn't that big of a deal. Like I've but watched back then with the I, editing yeah, exactly. Whatever. I've watched the the appendices and stuff for the new Hobbit movies. Oh yeah. And Peter Jackson will will finalize those movies like right before the premiere, but it's all digital. You just show up with a copy of you know and the just, Blu-ray or whatever, and you're good to go. Yeah. But in 1979, when you had you needed seven film reels for the entire movie, yeah. like finishing it days hey, before was hey, a big one, deal. Hey, one even better way to give a sense of scale? This shot. No. <laughs> they were like, oh man, the Enterprise is a big ship. Look how much bigger this thing is. You don't need, what, the last half hour? <laughs> oh. oh, man. What's what's with all these cuts? Like, actually, I'd argue that was actually something interesting. When it's like done, like huh? at this at this point, it's so hard to figure out what's interesting and what's not. I'm just trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Oh, and I, I just remembered this. Like you know that this was referenced in you played Star Fox, right? Star Fox sixty four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the whole the, the the robot you fight in Sector X is like where is that creator? That's a reference to this. Yeah. Like, I need to say that Korea talk. <laughs> hey, Poopy. <laughs> it's dogs just crawling all over us. Oh, hi, Poopy. The dog's the only one who can do something to entertain himself. Right now. <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't started humping our arms or something. He's not that excited. Because <laughs> we're watching Star Trek. The He's not William picture. Shatner. Come on. <laughs> cool. Hi, little guy. Just imagine one guy goes, you can't do that. Get away from there, <laughs> you bad boy. So it's so it's reading all the information from their computer. Actually, it kind of looks like it's typing. To, like, what is it doing? Take control of the computer. Yeah. Oh, poopy. Is that necessarily a bad thing? It's just. 
<laughs> on a completely different subject, because I'm fucking out of this movie. Oh, right wow. <laughs> um, so Spider-Man's in the Marvel oh, Universe action now. Spell. Oh, yeah. Eh, whatever. And the guy's like, what? Yeah, you jerk. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, action. did something actually happen? Stuff is, stuff is actually happening in the movie. Even though it still makes no goddamn sense. And then she stands up and does nothing, and it disintegrates her, or... Wait, what is that guy from Battlestar Galactica doing there? <laughs> they're, like they're about to come fool. <laughs> Hi! Seriously, that guy looks like he's cosplaying as what he thinks a centurion would look like in Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, so, this movie's still happening. It's not like one of those old printers. <laughs> They're all just like, what the fuck? <sighs> Is that guy going for a sparring match or something? Oh man, I'd be really sad if I actually cared about her character. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, well, she's bald. Well, here's the thing. Did she have a character? No. no. Well, she's bald. Describe Valeria in a way <laughs> where you don't mention her job or what she looks like. She's there. <laughs> uh, now now that's a robot anus. Come on. <laughs> that's the robot pyloric sphincter. Again, Robocop Triple X. <laughs> it's not under attack. Nothing's happening. See, this movie's just a gigantic cock tease. <laughs> Well, something it's just exciting all this, is happening, I suppose. It's just all the stuff that's supposed to be suspenseful, and it just falls flat. And it's like, it, 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 and the thing is, it has, like that, for example, like how that image is and how it's, you know, unfolding. That's really cool, I think. It's like, it looks like, like a flower. But I really like that as, as, See, as an image. This is something that they're, com that they're completely taking out of Star Wars, where they discover the Death Star and they get uh, pulled in, pulled in by the tractor closer, beam. Yeah. But it works in Star Trek because you got this suspenseful music and they're, and they're arguing back yeah, and forth with each other. Work, it doesn't work in Star Trek. It, it doesn't Star work Wars. in Star Trek because, God, it's so fucking boring. And your bone shows up again for absolutely no reason. He's just I wonder if he's going to say... Well, let's, should we take bets on whether he actually says a line this time? Before he came he up because he heard something cool was going on. Actually, I have, a, I have a theory. I think it's like sick base boring as hell. What I are think, you guys doing? I think I know the reason why they do that. It's because I think that their way of creating like ex excitement, tension, or whatever, is if you get a character, he walks hey, in, you, know, you see them walk in, and then you can move to something else. That way, there's something going on in the frame because somebody's walking in. Hey, do you know that Enterprise is really small in comparison to Voyager? <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> we're back to this. We're back to so, now, so now we're going to do the exact same shit, only inside V'ger. Yeah. No, that'd be too exciting, mm. Mr. Decker. <gasps> Borg! He said resistance is futile! Borg! I think that theory is correct. Ooh, he's looking at McCoy. Ooh. For no reason. <laughs> no, I shouldn't have been listening to the soundtracks of something I really like before coming here. <laughs> <laughs> the soundtrack is great. No, I mean, like, I shouldn't have been, I'm not, I shouldn't have been talking, I shouldn't have been listening to the soundtrack of something I really liked before coming here to watch this. <laughs> Duh. I was, uh, no, I was in the car listening to the Twin Peaks soundtrack. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I really... See, and now he leaves. He doesn't say a single goddamn word. This is the second time in the movie. He comes onto the bridge, says nothing, You know, on an original five-year mission, you would talk to me, Jim. <laughs> I think I know what happened. He had to tell him something, he showed up, he forgot, he left... Then he remembered. He showed another up robot. Then he hands. forgot. He, was, he only showed up so that they can exchange a look of "Ooh, Spock doesn't want." He, he wants cross to be in look, like, look. He's a little cross-eyed. Yeah. <laughs> one eye. No, one, one eye is just slightly more looking that way. <laughs> he only gets that way when he's terrified or when he's near a preschool. Oh, God, please stop. 
So it's a robot. Oh, a board cube. A board penis. cube. You <laughs> saw that. It was a board cube. He's just praying to get out of this movie. <laughs> Pray for me too, Shatner. So the robot's anus just puckered at us? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's holding in. Holding in right now. So wait, if it's the robot's anus, does that mean that the, the Enterprise oh, yeah, had okay. anal sex? You, you, know, you know another thing is? Uh, the in, what the inside of the of, of V'ger reminds me of? Wow. David, I know you've seen the movie. It reminds me of the vampire ship in um, Life oh. Force. Life Force. Yeah. That's a good point. And for those who don't know what that is, that's a Toby Hooper film. They had this deal with... Uh, with Canon, Canon films. Yeah, Canon. It was for three movies. Um, Life Force was one of them. Invaders from Mars, the remake of that movie. Uh huh. Was and, it the third one? Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Oh, Texas. Well, so yeah. I thought it was. I thought it was. When is Screen Factory going to do Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2? I don't know. They should do one. They should. Because <laughs> I, I'm sure that all three people listening to this have figured out <laughs> that I am trying to avoid talking about this movie. And it's not because I don't like movies. I've had nothing to say about it. It's because there's nothing to talk about there's with this movie. Nothing. Yeah, I mean, pretty much you, we handled in the first five minutes. The effects are great. The score is great. And that's it. Uh. Yeah. And for some reason, everyone's wearing footy pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some of the performances are good, I guess. Yeah, that is a great performance by special effects. <laughs> <laughs> Another I will nice. say that looks good the way it's opening. Yeah. It looks like um, it looks like it's a, like it's grains of sand almost yeah. to a degree. Well, it did. Now it just looks no. Now <laughs> now they go like to a significantly like a worse wheel. shot. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, let's do something really interesting to make it look dumb. Is he analyzing fingerprints up there? Is... Viger was the one who killed my mother. <laughs> it looks different in every shot. Why do they keep changing it? I don't know. Maybe it's like a it's like a voyage of thumb. Oh! I honestly oh. think that Nemo's makeup in this is. Awful. He's gonna sneeze. Oh, I guess not. <laughs> Are they talking about porn? Oh my. <laughs> Ooh. Now I didn't know somewhere. I was that right. I didn't know how close I was. <laughs> like, now it's getting interesting. Now, would this film have actually gone Oh, up? she got throat cancer. <laughs> oh. Now, the question is, if we actually saw nudity, would this film have gone up a star rating? No. It's like, well, at least we got if, it was, if it was her nudity, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Yeah. If it was Shatner's nudity, yes. <laughs> Has Shatner ever done a nude scene? Oh, God, I hope not. I hope so. Because I remember, I think, like, didn't Adam West okay, I, at I, times do Did some they just scenes? transport clothes onto her? Yeah. I don't know, but... Uh, that that looks like what happens when you know, a ch uh, uh, check wears nothing but your shirt, and so oh, yeah. that actually looks really hot. And wait, did you have that disco collar before? No, that's why like I said they trans. What they the like fuck? he pushed a button and then clothes appeared. No, on I mean like when the clothes first came on, that disco collar wasn't there. I think it was. Was it? Was oh, it? Yeah. No, I don't. Well, remember. let's not rewind it to find. Yeah, out. <laughs> let's let's just say that I'm right. Oh, no doubt, Spock. He obviously so, already knows everything about... Oh, God. So just looking at what she's wearing, I'm assuming that's Luke Skywalker's <laughs> night gear that they just borrowed from Lucas. That just looks so ridiculous. Oh, it's Starfleet's helmet. Ugh. Why did they give him the line? Well, you see, in this era of Star Trek continuity, I thought Nathan would know this, but every starship has their own football team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so disappointed you didn't know that being such a huge yeah. Star Trek fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, I, again, every time we go back to Spock and the shots of Nimoy in this, I just think of how bad Spock's makeup is in this because his eyebrows, in the old show's eyebrows, his eyebrows look more realistic. And everyone after this, his eyebrows look realistic. It's like his realistic. face is discolored. Yeah, and what, what it looks like is, um, you know when you see those, ch those chicks who've shaved their eyebrows and then, mm -hmm. like, had two eyebrows oh. on them. Oh. That's his eyebrows right now. <laughs> yeah. So V'ger wow, probed the ship, killed her, and then 
made a robot that looks exactly like her to interact with them? I'm just waiting for Benny Hill to show up and start smacking her bald head. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like the little sword guy, he goes, he goes, I am programmed to tell you that smoking is bad. <laughs> Oh, Lish is getting his most cute pose for you, Nathan. Aww. Aww. <laughs> well, I guess this is kind of futuristic looking. <laughs> See, that's why I brought the dog to, for entertainment. <laughs> for entertainment while yeah. we watch Star Trek the motion picture. Yeah. <laughs> so now Decker's going to show up. Fall in love with the robot probe that looks like his ex-girlfriend well, but, she's, but well, she's dead well, so I, th I think he's gonna fall even more madly in love with the robot probe because technically it's a newborn <laughs> <laughs> wait oh. uh. did you just, just describe the plot to Blade Runner Decker <laughs> falls in love with the robot <laughs> <laughs> but is Deckard himself a robot <laughs> my thoughts no he's not Question. He's mostly a he's mostly away because he wants to have sex with her first. Well, no, me first. This probe may be our key to the aliens. Probe might be it. Exactly. Yeah. Program mechanism, Commander. Its body indicates our navigator and design. So she is dead. Is she dead alive? <laughs> uh, no, that'd be a better thing to watch. It'd be lawnmowers <laughs> and zombies. A priest that kicks ass for the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Zomb the world's first and f best zombie baby. <laughs> uh, we're, we're actually hitting a... Oh, look, there's that fuzzy thing. So the, yeah. It's, uh, it looks like a... Really Why does the back of his head need to be in focus? Does he, makes no did sense. Did he have a tan line there? What the? Did you see that weird cut? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With butt sex. <laughs> I like that she's wearing high heels too. Well, of course. <laughs> well, of course, your robot probes need to be sexy. <laughs> and see, the robot doesn't understand the concept of sneakers yet. Cross-eyed. <laughs> So even though it's it's a probe in her form, it's kind of in love with Decker? Or maybe it's feeding off it of it. It makes no fucking sense whatsoever. It's probably feeding off of it, maybe. Well, that's a good shot. Yeah, that's a it's a nice shot, but... And they could have done that, to show scale that. Okay, you know, okay, that kind of reminds me of Coruscant from episode 3. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll give episode 3 this. It's more exciting than this movie. <laughs> Ooh, wait, wait, wait. You just said something complimentary about a prequel film. A <laughs> shot. You know, I'll I'll say this about the about about um, episode three at least. It's horrible. I will never get it with the credit of oh, it's the best of the prequels. That's like saying oh man, that is the best case of diarrhea I've ever had. Reven Revenge of the Sh of the Sith is the best case of diarrhea for the prequels. I'll give it that. <laughs> but it's it's still a horrible movie. But I would rather watch that or The Phantom Menace than this. But you never had a good case of diarrhea? I'll, however, <laughs> I will say this. If I had a choice between Attack of the Clones and this, that's a hard decision. That's a tough one. Oh, that's that's an incredibly, um, incredibly hard decision. And I'll be honest, Star Trek might what, win. What, what love story do you like better? Anakin and Padme in Attack of the Clones or Decker... And the Ilea probe in this. Star Trek: The Motion Picture. This, this, this. <laughs> no, and the reason why because they're not talking about sand. <laughs> well, that. But there's also this little bit of history in that, as we we know a little bit that they used to be lovers in the past, but we don't know what exactly it is, and that's far more interesting than these two awkward people spouting awkward dialogue yeah. and, and talking about the, how they awkwardly love each other. I might want to move those chips. Oh, oh no! The dog's about stealing chips. Well, then, then there's the other thing about um, Illyria and uh, Decker is essentially it's the prototype for Riker and Troy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And even looking at that, if this if this relationship brought us 
um, the whole you know Riker and Troy on mm. Next Generation, that then, autom- that- then automatically this makes this movie better than Attack on the Gene Bones. Roddenberry is like the sci-fi version of Aaron Sorkin, where when his <laughs> characters don't work in a show, he just recycles them for another show. I'll give you seen like he has the exact same characters in Sports Night that he does in Studio sixty that he does in Newsroom. Like the same like character dynamics are just recycled oh, what about, throughout his shows that don't work. What about the West Wing? Oh, you mean like shows uh, that don't work? I, 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 I haven't seen I haven't seen enough of West Wing. I've seen a few episodes, but not enough to really know. But if you watch the first season of Sports Night, the only episode the only season of uh, Studio sixty, and then just the first episode of Newsroom, you see the exact same character dynamics didn't throughout the choose, entire thing. Didn't he choose to cancel Newsroom? I have no idea. I've only seen the first episode. Because <laughs> there's, there's a character in the West you know, Wing called Mar- Mara Carey. Plays Mar- Ma- so Mara, Mara Kelly. Ke- Mara plays, Kelly's amazing. I was, love he, Mara Kelly. But, but in the West Wing, is like as the season, the first season progressed, you just sit there and you go, there's no real point for her to be here because everybody else's dynamics work. And she did have something going on there, but then they just cut her out. I genuinely, I genuinely said that. I've seen Mara Kelly in stuff that I think is, you know, kind of... Blah, but I love Moira Kelly, and I also I'll say I'll say say, uh, also say uh, say this about Moira Kelly. Going back to you know what I was listening to in, the, in my car on the way over here, the Twin Peaks soundtrack, in the movie of uh, Twin Peaks, Fire Walk with Me, um, she plays um, Laura Flynn Boyle. <laughs> I'm sorry. That guy's reaction was priceless. Uh, the best fucking oh, nerve pinch reaction. Uh, but uh, but uh, in the it movie, was the Vulcan oh, nerve fucking... orgasm. <laughs> now she looks pretty. But um, Moira Kelly um, in, played um, Laura Flynn po- Boyle's part because Laura Flynn Boyle will not come back for the Twin Peaks movie. Mm-hmm. And Moira Kelly is better than Laura Flynn Boyle. Well, Laura Flynn Boyle is not, is not a particularly good actress from what I've, what I've, well, from the things I've seen. So I was like, yeah, I agree. Kelly was definitely an upgrade. Did you see Fire Walk with me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wonderfully nutty fun. It's it, it's amazingly it gets it gets really amazingly dark and um have you seen the missing pieces like the ninety minutes worth of deleted scenes that Lynch re- repurposed? Unfortunately, not. No, I've got I, since I have the Twin Peaks box set, I'll show it to you sometime. It's really good and has some stuff that I wish he hadn't cut out. Like it's stuff that really adds to. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try to avoid spoiling anything because I don't know if Nathan. You don't know anything about Twin Peaks, right? I've seen some of it here and there, but I've but, never so, watched so it. Let all me put it this way: Do you know who killed Laura Palmer? Yes. You do? Yeah. Who then? Wasn't it like a demon? Oh, so then you don't know. Yeah, because okay. like, the first episode is all about the mystery of who who killed the first who killed the, her. Okay, but well, isn't it, it isn't it like a demon or something that? Okay, let me ask: Do you know who the demon possessed to do it? Uh, ooh. I'm, I've been told, but I don't remember. It was okay. so long ago. Well, the movie actually adds a lot of more depth. Because in the film, you don't get a lot of depth to uh, the Palmer family. It just... it, but uh, in the deleted scenes, you get a lot more of the depth of the Palmer family. So when the so then it also translates better to the first to the first episode of the series, so you can feel the tragedy even more, just, and it adds a lot more layers to what actually happened to her murder. I just love we're talking about Twin Peaks when we're about to see Spock enter the space asshole. Well, <laughs> because. <laughs> Literally, we, we, we could talk about anything. Like, okay, let's go back to episode two. We can talk Star. about space assholes anytime, David. Okay, <laughs> really. Okay, but, but okay, let, let's go back to kind of compare that comparison we were making earlier between this and the Star Wars prequels, particularly episode two. I'd rather see this in episode two. Episode two's awful. Who's a bigger space asshole, Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin? What? Huh? <laughs> Well, we're talking about space well, assholes. While we're on right? the subject of space assholes, I yeah. don't know. I haven't George met either Lucas. one. <laughs> you begin to wonder, like, who was an asshole? Who I don't know. I'm, so, I'm I'm starting to starting to wish we're watching episode two right now. I don't know. At least that at least that's got lightsaber okay, fights you know what, in it. You know what, Nathan, God. Nathan, you don't get to complain because <laughs> I'm the one you to did the movie. this. <laughs> you did this. And even you know what, this even movie would be better if it had some lightsaber fights in it. I'll but you know what? That. Even with the lightsaber fights, I would rather. I, that's the thing. I don't like any <laughs> of the lightsaber fights in the prequels. I like. I like the 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 one on the Phantom Menace. Is fine. The, it, it's fun, but I always say this: like, there's a different, but there's a difference between lightsaber fights and Jedi fights. That's true. 
That's why we'll always refer to the fights in both Empire and Jedi. Well, yeah, of course. To uh, the the lightsaber duels and the prequels because those are fights. Like in the Empire, Darth plays with Luke. He beats the living shit out of him. And it's, it's, it's not, and he's not even trying as hard. He's like, it, you essentially get the feeling that when that fight's over, he's like, look, this is the minimum of what I could have done to you. Join up with me. Why? Why you killed my dad? No, 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 I am your dad. But let's. You know. Well, spoiler alert, everyone. <laughs> Here we go. Wee. Wee! <laughs> That's a little James Rolfe humor. <laughs> Ugh, that was clever. Oh, are we gonna watch to bully flee in the future? You know, I'll, I'll say this: if I will watch whatever you whatever you choose to watch, but I will not like if you wanted to watch the AVGN movie, we would watch that, but I would not buy it. You'd have to find a way to watch. <laughs> you have to it. bring your own damn copies. Yeah, I will not give money to that movie. Now that oh, was this a movie. Is cool. This is a good sequence. Like so this. what is it? Is he going through like the fucking O ring of the anus? <laughs> wait, is there? Wait, hold on, hold on. Is there an entire galaxy inside it's, Egypt? It's supposed so. to be a. He, I think he says later, it's supposed to be a visual representation of everything Vidra has seen, Vidra uh, along Vidra's travels. So it's all these like, <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be all these worlds that Vidra has explored or whatever. I guess. You know what the um, best part of the uh, lightsaber duel in Return of the Jedi is? Hmm. When Luke is just beating down on Vader, oh yeah, and then the Emperor just like strike him down, and you can join me by the side. And then he just looks at his own hand, looks at Vader's like robotic stump, throws his lightsaber away, going, "No, I'm a Jedi now." And he's like, "Okay." <laughs> and the thing is, I li- and the thing is, I like that because in that moment you have to you have to think Luke knows there's a good chance he's gonna die. Yeah, he knows in that moment he's turning to the Emperor, who even though he is a Jedi now. The Emperor is more powerful. Space than vagina. Spa- that is that is a space yeah. vagina if I've space, ever seen one. Space and I've seen quite a few. So you've seen the space <laughs> anus. You've space. seen the space vagina. You've uh, you've written stories about a few space vaginas. <laughs> and those <are> space balls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, I, Mel Brooks is once again talking about a space ball sequel. The search. F- I, yeah. I, I, I thought it was going to. Was it supposed to be space balls three? The search for space yeah, balls two. And I, I love that idea, but now it's going to be space balls two. The search for more money. Which I guess works as the joke because they do mention that in because the that's balls. every sequel nowadays. The yeah. sequels to movies that their first one was out like twenty years ago. Yeah, and, it's, ve- and it's very rare that it makes that a sequel to those movies makes a lot of sense. Or e- and even with TV shows, like they said, like um, obviously they're bringing Twin Peaks back, but mm-hmm. I totally understand them bringing tweaks, Twin Peaks back considering how. I read they're thinking about doing that with X Files too, of doing it kind of like what they did with Twenty Four, where it's just like a limited. Single season, kind yeah. Of, that's what that's what they're doing. Kind with, of thing yeah, added that's on. That's for, what they're yeah, doing with Twin yeah. Peaks too. Just like Showtime, yeah. ten episodes, which is yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, and he's coming! Oh God, Leonard. Wee. <laughs> like now, Leonard. Okay, what I want you, you to know, see okay, in the you know shot what, is your O face. Okay, okay, you want you know what I don't get? Why? For, oh wait, I was gonna say I thought that was a Spock coming back. <laughs> then I realized it didn't take twenty minutes for him. Oh, to... Farts him out right there. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> wait, we need to see. We need to see every bit of his voyage of him coming back. Yeah, really. <laughs> of him coming. Of just him. Oh, wait. so wait, wait, wait. So the film decided just to do that. Just like, oh no, we're not gonna show it. We're just like. <laughs> you mean the film decided? We'll to skip scare. ahead. Really? The oh film, wow. The, the film decided to have some st- some. St- uh, I'm waving my hands like I just don't care. <laughs> Come here. Come here, you big blow. Too bad we can't kiss through glass. <laughs> Spock. 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 <laughs> I can't believe she broke up with me. I can't believe <laughs> I can't believe I agreed to this. I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> I'm so gonna die the next one. I'm not even joking. <laughs> There's so many different. You can make so many memes out of that one shot. Like, like I can't. Like, like um, I just saw the red wedding. <laughs> Staggering. Wait, does um, does Bones not have Bones? Doesn't have the imp- the Enterprise now. Now he's actually like in a doctor's outfit, which makes it's, so much more sense and looks better. It's a little sexy '70s doctor outfit. <laughs> I should have known. I like that vest he's wearing. <laughs> What? 
Hey, um, okay, anybody want to take a... I, David might know this. Uh-huh. Take but, a guess um, as to what's going on? Oh, no, I'm long past giving a shit. <laughs> um, what is Leonard Nimoy's connection to the Transformers franchise? Oh, I... Does he Dave, more no, no, let's see, let's see if Nathan... He vo- well, didn't he voice one in the animated movie? What? Who did he voice? Uh, is it the same character he voiced in Transformers 3? Or is it a different one? Different one, I think. Different one? Then I don't know. David? Actually, I don't even remember who he voiced in Transformers I, I 3. Just, I just remember him being in two Transformers. Yes, films. that's it. Okay, in the first... In the fir- in anime, I Trans- just remember him getting shot in the face in Transformers 3. <laughs> okay, in the third... In the original Transformers animated movie, or, yeah. what I can, or what I like to call the only good Transformers movie. You can give him a chip if you want. No, I just just make sure that nothing is on there. We're talking about David, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> But um, in the Transformers movie, um, spoilers for anyone that's seen the only good Transformers movie, dun, dun, dun. both Megatron and Optimus Prime get in a duel to the death mm-hmm. and both essentially die. Mm-hmm. But um, Megatron is found by this uh, this being called Unicron, which is like essentially a Death Star Transformer. Yeah, that's Orson okay. Welles. Yeah, that's played by Orson Welles. Mm-hmm. And then Unicron revives Megatron as a as a being called Galvatron. And then Galvatron becomes the vo- is the vo- is voiced by Leonard Nimoy. Okay. Before that, he, Megatron was voiced by Frank Welker. Then when they went back to a normal cartoon series and Galvatron was still there, Frank Welker voiced uh, Galvatron. And that's more interesting than this movie. <laughs> or any of the other Transformers movies. This yeah. Like God, I love the first Transformers movies. I, I say this completely unsarcastically, even though I know there are going to be a lot of people who mock me. The Transformers movie, when I was a kid, it was the first movie that ever made me cry. Yeah, but it didn't have a little tiny robot humping Shia LaBeouf's leg, yeah. so I mean, yeah, who cares? it can't be that or, good. Or a robot peeing on John Turturro. <laughs> yeah. Or John Turturro in a thong. Or, yeah. or just John Turturro just yelling. <laughs> yeah, all it had was a scene that made lots of uh, young kids that have to be escorted out of movie theaters crying. Yeah. <laughs> he killed Optimus! <laughs> he, you have to admit, Takei looks good in a captain's seat. Yeah. I'm always surprised that they never made a spin-off of him as the captain. Well, on his show, was the well, they were making they were making just the movies at this point. So I mean, no, no, no. I mean, like when Next Generation came on, like do like one of Next Generation, then another one set in the past with Excelsior. I think I think after after when Next Generation was so popular and they were going to make another spin-off show, I think they wanted to keep it in that same oh, universe I understand so that, that they could like. You know, cross connect everything. I understand, I understand that, but uh, they never really cross connected uh, Deep Space Nine and um, Next Generation aside from Picard and the pilot and Worf and like becoming a cast member like mm-hmm. season four. Then they would reference, I guess, the Borg occasionally. There's a, there's a lot of episodes where. There was like it would be like an episode of Next Generation, and then a character from that episode or something would cross oh, yeah, over I to an episode Miles of Miles Deep Space O'Brien. Nine. Miles O'Brien. O'Brien. Yeah, he's the... love O'Brien. Yeah. O'Brien's great. I think we said that his name was Miles or Miles or Miles or Miles or Miles. Miles, Miles. Lieutenant Miles or Miles. Miles. How, how many? How many O'Brien? Miles O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> That's another MST3K joke. Just totally stall. He looks stoned. <laughs> They probably were. Hey, it's 1979. They probably all were. White lines. <laughs> Red letter meteor. Space Coke. Space Coke. Why does I love that. <laughs> Look at why that. Why is there I a computer old in sounding, it? Old sounding. Uh, sorry, your Old sounding in. computer. <laughs> Cross eyed. And this McCoy just poured out of his mind. I don't think McCoy's the only one bored out of his mind here. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's the entire crew. Oh, fireworks! Whee! Wait, are they back? On, are they near Earth now? Yeah. So why do they even the, go? the whole time the thing has been traveling to Earth, now they're finally there, and it's... See, okay, okay, that's a major problem with this movie. We well, had no idea that they were yeah. even yeah. near Earth. That uh, would there have been much of a difference if they just waited. Yeah. Why do they have? Oh, wait. Yeah, they should have just stood by. They should have just stayed by Earth and like let it come to us. And the thing is, I could, I get the idea behind wanting them to cut it off, but since they didn't do any, oh, what's that word thing? Anything? <laughs> then it's useless to go do that. I uh. wait. Didn't Alan Dean Foster also write the uh, Star Wars novels of the movie? 
Oh, goodness, I don't know. Um, I know he did a Splinter of the... Didn't he do Splinter he of the He did Mind's Splinter of the Mind's Eye. I don't know which if he wrote Lucas, any other which novels. Which was Lucas's original vision for the second Star Wars movie, which I'm kind of glad... Because, yeah, I heard they... they <laughs> it's, a fun, it's a fun book, but... D- didn't they write two different... Yeah. Treatments like one was what eventually became Empire. Empire. The other one was Splinter of the Mind's Eye, and yeah. since they went with the other one, they released that yeah. as a book. And as, as much as I do enjoy Splinter of the um, Mind's Eye, I'm so glad they were with Empire. Oh well, yeah. But wasn't the, there where Splinter of the Mind's Eye he, that Luke chopped off Vader's arm, and originally that happened, and that was the reason why he had to get a robotic arm, not this. Oh, he got a robotic arm when he was Anakin because. Yeah. Good lord, <laughs> that got chopped off, then got locked up. He's like, damn it! I mean, the, that, it's like it's like it, poetry, David, so that it rhymes. If they actually yeah. had that made that official, if they actually had made that official, that actually adds a lot more weight to um, Vader hacking off Luke's hand, especially knowing mm-hmm. that um, Vader is Luke's father. Because it's like, yeah, I'm your dad, but you still cut me first. <laughs> You know that's really odd that um, I think Roddenberry is also a good example of this. Sometimes a creator no longer knowing what's good for their own f- creation. In the case of this, this could, as you as mm-hmm. said repeatedly, this could have worked as a television show yeah. or like as a I don't know maybe like a three like two or three parter. Yeah, I mean, you know, or or like like what they did with like the old Doctor Who serials, where it's like every twenty five minutes that ends and then you know begins the other. Yeah, one. and he did go off and create you know like the movies took their own route and then he went off and created. Next generation, and, which got and even it. even though the first couple seasons, the first, seasons one or two are not that. I mean, there are some really good episodes yeah. sprinkled in, but overall, it's not that good. It until the, it hits like season three. And the, isn't season three when he kind of stepped away? Season three is amazing. Okay, he, 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 he died. Yeah. I think during season four. I want to say season three. He kind of stepped back. But I'm not sure. Yeah, over, I'm not. Right? I'm not sure about the whole behind the scenes. Because that's what. But I, that's season what, three is fucking amazing. That's the way I understand it, at least, that season three, I think he stepped back. I wouldn't be surprised, because that's when it started getting really good. The same thing really shows through, again, with Lucas and Star Wars, because, um, let's see, Dark Horse did amazing uh, Star Wars comics, like, um, Mm -hmm. what what I actually think is, like, the best expanded universe story ever, I'm sure other people would disagree with me, but Dark Empire, where Luke falls to the Dark Dark Empire is really good. And the thing is, I love the whole reasoning behind it. It's not some convoluted, I loved her, (laughs) reason that they gave to Vader it was more it was more along the lines of Luke just was wondering I needed to know why my father went this way and I thought the only way I could do it was to was to go there myself I thought I was strong enough to get out I'm not and that's good that's a really good story but uh, right now Marvel has the license again to Star Wars and like well, yeah because it's all Disney now like honestly Nathan you should read those books it, like which they, books uh, Marvel Star Wars their Star Wars series and the new um, Darth Vader the, one. The new ones that are just yeah, coming out? Yeah, the new out? ones. Oh, okay. No, I, I haven't read any of those. Because let, let's see. In it, let's see. Oh, just tell me if any of this stuff sounds appealing to you. Um, the Rebels go to infiltrate and destroy a... Um, imper- Niger? No, an, no <laughs> an Imperial weapons base. Vader shows up unexpectedly. So it's set during like the original trilogy? Yeah, it's set during just... the original trilogy. Okay. But it's, um, af- it's between Star Wars and Empire. Okay. And um, in it, let's see... Um, Han hotwires a, a um, Imperial Walker, and oh, she wants the Kirk unit. Oh yeah, mm. so she's just like every other. <laughs> so she's just like every other alien. But yeah, in the Han, Star Trek universe. Yeah, Han hotwires an Imperial Walker. Um, Luke confronts Vader face to face for the first time and mm. almost gets his ass kicked. But then Vader picks up Luke's. Uh, this is before Vader knows who Luke is, okay. and Vader picks up Luke's lightsaber and goes, "Wait a second. Obi-Wan gave you this lightsaber? <laughs> because it's his lightsaber. Because it's connected. Because he picked it up on the volcano. Oh, and there's just one really good scene where um, Chewbacca tries to um, assassinate Vader. With like nice. A, but, but the thing is, Vader senses it, so he lifts up five stormtroopers and spins them around to take the shots. <laughs> it's so awesome. And then there's just one scene where Han tries to flatten... Vader with the Imperial Walker leg, and Vader just raise, raises his hand and deflects it with the Force and starts ripping apart <laughs> the, the Walker. It's so good, these comics. Is this movie still happening? <laughs> it's still happening. Wait, hold on. Is this scene still she, happening? She hasn't gotten the Kirk unit we yet. Missed, we missed the, the best line, the, the whole, like, what are we supposed to do? Spank it? Oh, did we miss the spanking line? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, no. 
We need to get space. Okay, that shot hasn't changed. I have to space anuses. Oh, wait, something's coming vaginas. out. There's a turret. Wait, I thought it was opening. Now it's shutting? Is it going in? This must be very painful for the space asshole. Because <laughs> I'm that big going in. Okay, look, it's opening. Now let's say they do another exterior shot and it's... Cl- oh, yeah. But, they're, they're but starting in the other to get shot, it, it was closing, correct? Yeah. yeah. It does look like a pinwheel. <laughs> well, let me take a. It's all those. It's all those awesome spotlights. And it's like, hey, look at here. We got a. We got a sale going on. <laughs> I, like, I like how Stephen Collins is it's raising the... his eyebrow. That's like the. That's like the cliche Star Trek move. Like Kirk does it. Spock does it. McCoy does it. <laughs> Did someone say grade school? Oh god. <laughs> he's ra- he's constantly raising his eyebrow. Oh Ooh, yeah, look at that devilish smile. Kirk, you're way too old for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's in this movie. I forgot for a second the check off was in the film. In Soviet Russia, check off in your movie. <laughs> so they're going to Jesus' it's, house. They're going. Uh, <laughs> they're go, They're going to the, the newest club that's just opening. Well, up. they're all dressed for disco. They need. They really are. <laughs> they need. They need an intergalactic <laughs> Stefan. <laughs> the United Federation of Planets' hottest new club is oh. Viger. This giant, yeah, this giant satellite that's yeah. traveled billions of miles to destroy the Earth has everything. You know, Romulan ale, William Shatner's toupee, you know, human we, warp drives. This, this movie does need Bill Hader. It <laughs> does. And it finally answers that question, why the studio will never let Gene Roddenberry write another Star Trek feature ever again. <gasps> <gasps> it's that thing that, where a midget okay, lifts up his pants and yeah, says, engage. Okay. That's either, that is either the manger in Bethlehem or Santa Claus's house. Is this the Santa Claus house from the film Santa Claus? <laughs> the one with like the big puffy glory yeah. hole lips? Yeah. <laughs> they should have called this movie Space Pajama Party. <laughs> space Blanket Bingo. Yeah. Actually, I would like to see that where they all go to the space planet... And they all have to battle that, that that mean Mr. Corporate owner who's gonna take away their take away their beach and their music and they have to get into a surfing contest. I'm pretty sure that's one of the episodes of the next generation. <laughs> that is a terrible map painting. It actually looks like a tur- that is just it awful. looks like somebody painted a turtle shell to look like the end of her. That is eyes. terrible. What is that? Right right there. Uh, below the the there. Right, no, that's where that? they, are people that's where they're coming out. No, no, but that's where they come up. But right, oh wait, did they just pull up to the? That's supposed to be the ground, right? It pulled up to something like a bunch of rocks. I, 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 here's the weird thing: I didn't know the Enterprise could pull up the shit because <laughs> I didn't think the Enterprise was a car. Yeah, like I thought. Isn't that? Isn't this why they have shuttlecraft? Yeah, because you can't get too close. But then they're like, "Oh, there's an atmosphere forming. How convenient!" But, but, that, but I can just but, walk to it. But I keep my helmet on just. What in is case. with the? What is those jackets they're wearing? What? Again, this this reminds me of that. God. Other, okay, them going out there without any spaces on room or even, without even a shell card reminds me of that Red Letter oh, Media Prometheus. I thing. love that. I <laughs> keep my space helmet on just in fucking case. Yeah. I love that old special effect where it's like you can see that the little box that they're in because mm-hmm. like the black yeah. was different. I, I always love that effect. Okay, I feel like at any moment they're going to start singing We Built This City because this <laughs> looks like an 80s I gonna, music. I was going to say at any moment it looks like they're going to start a Q-Bird adaptation. <laughs> Wait, isn't this the same thing from Star Trek V where God it shows is. up? Yeah. And the blue lighting, right? What is your tail, buddy? That's Dave. He's talking to David again. I'm talking oh. to David again, not the dog. Oh. <laughs> and here's the twist. Dun, dun, dun. Fe- feature. Is now, this spoiler. is a really interesting idea, basic idea for the story, but they already used it but in they- an episode of the original series, which is a thousand times better. And they waited five hours to reveal it. Oh. Wait, wait, the end is approaching? 
No, it's not. This movie's never going to end. This is a timeless <laughs> loop. People, you know, people like to complain about you know Peter Jackson's Tolkien movies, you know, especially Return of the King. I'd rather watch that. Not only because Return of the King is actually a good movie, but it doesn't feel like it's as long as it is. <laughs> it does. And I don't care what anybody says. Oh, it has too many endings. I'd rather take it, all 12 of those endings than wait to get to the single ending of this movie. And then argue that they've earned it. And yes. argue that, they yes, they have earned all those endings. In fact, I want them to, I wish in their theatrical that they had put the, Sor, the Saruman ending in there. Oh, yeah. That, that's the one thing that always bugged me about that, which is like, because this is going to be so stupid, it's because at the Screen Actors Guild Award, they gave out the award for best ensembles that... Christopher Lee and Brad Dourif didn't get it. Why? Because they were cut out of the movie. They were cut out yet, of the movie. That's yet Sean, yet uh. Sean Bean gets an award for a friggin' flashback. <laughs> they, they well, get... okay, yeah, but, <laughs> but you have to remember, it's Sean Bean. I mean, there really isn't a big movie he's in or a big TV show where he doesn't die. Oh, uh, Jupiter Ascending. I haven't seen oh, that spoilers. yet. <laughs> I haven't seen yeah, that, David. When we, see, when we say big, we mean successful. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I might end up liking Jupiter Ascending. I haven't right. seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. I am morbidly curious about it. So am I. And I, I would say I'm more optimistically curious about it just because of how much I loved um, Cloud Atlas. Oh yeah, I love that. The, the, that that I love the fact that they made that movie. That that's a film that you know, people love it or hate it, but I like that they went out and made something like that. I yeah, and they're never going to get the chance to do it again because it is failing <laughs> miserably. It is. It's, it's they're gonna, true. It's they're they're going to have a, like a Gene Roddenberry career like after motion picture. Yeah. They're like, oh, wow, that huge <laughs> weird movie you made it made absolutely no money. Yeah, we're never giving you another big budget movie again. I wonder if Jupiter, Sorry, which house? I wonder if Jupiter <laughs> Ascending is the reason that Mila Kunis isn't in Ted 2. Maybe. She's not in Ted 2? No, she's not. Hmm. I mean, I, I, Amanda Seyfried's the new love interest for Mark Wahlberg. Oh. Is she supposed to be the same character? No, or? different character. Oh, okay. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I really like. I think Spock's reaction was <laughs> tuned with yours. Like, eh, whatever. I don't know. I really, I really liked Ted. I thought it was a fun. I movie. liked Ted. Yeah. It's okay. I think Ted's the proof that you know Seth MacFarlane can be funny. Well, I just, I just don't. Egomaniacal turd. I just don't think. <laughs> I look at this way. I think, I think Seth MacFarlane has been has had a hand in some really funny things. Mm -hmm. Ted and American Dad. Yeah. Oh, he's, American Dad's great. American Dad's awesome. He's been handed a funny thing, like a sombrero. Da -da -da. Her, 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 but, her, um, her, her. You know what I've really noticed about one of the reasons I don't think Family Guy works for me? Is that all the characters become really mean and dark mm -hmm. and angry. Except for Stewie and Brian, who technically should be the darkest and meanest characters <laughs> in the show. And they're, they're the friendliest, nicest ones. Meanwhile, you know, there's an entire episode dedicated to Meg getting the living shit beaten out of her. <laughs> and it's, it's just horrible. It's a horrible show. Has she not blinked yet? Huh? Oh, she didn't blink. She hasn't blinked for four hours, David. <laughs> So as a return, they have to have sex, right? Yeah, because then they like merge, and it's oh god, well, that's it's so nice. weird. I guess it's like a nice positive way to get information back to the to the the gods, the creators. You have to have sex. Okay, I'm not even joking. Is this movie seriously almost over? Yeah, it's, it's almost over. It's reaching the climax, but it's yeah, like you the climax, there's really huh? no climax. Yeah, that's what I say. This movie has an ending. There's no way it has a climax. Has a climax. <laughs> yes, yes. L l let me reiterate. It's coming towards the end, not the because climax. Because there's no way with this much of a lack of tension that you can have anything yeah. that the, coming close to a climax. It's hot. What is dick? But see, what, here's what I don't get. Why does Voyager call itself Voyager? Because logically you would know that its name is Voyager. Because there was smudge on it. I don't know. Yeah, but wouldn't it have been smart enough to, to wipe the smudge here's off? Here's, an, here's not, another, here's another really nerdy smudge. complaint. Their communicators are fucking wristwatches. Dick Tracy. Like, uh, like if you, you want to do Star Trek, you got to have that classic flip over. Or the next generation where it's just... Or the beam. Yeah, this thing, that was cool. What but I was, to, when it's a wristwatch, that's just the lame. Now, what I want to know about the, um, the, the chest ones that they had next generation is, how do they know who they were going to talk to? Because they say, don't they say... Riker to Data or something. I have to watch. It... Hey, that's a good idea. Let's turn this off and watch Star Trek Next Generation just to find out. <laughs> yeah, don't they say to I... so-and-so and that's how it 
knows who Nathan, to Nathan, there's only call. one way to um, solve this. Turning this off and watching <laughs> Star Trek the next I just, generation. I just noticed that they're all sad. I mean, they're all blue. <laughs> He's playing with it. You know, even though it is space and things would be really well preserved, shouldn't V'ger look even older? Mm. Or Voyager, rather? It kept itself in good shape, maybe? Wait, I was going to suggest it cleaned itself but not, up, but, it, but not but, the smudge. But not the smudge, so it yeah. still doesn't know what its name is. Or maybe so. they or maybe they kept the smudge on because it didn't want to admit to itself that it was Voyager. Better to keep up the illusion that it's Voyager. Because it wanted to assume some kind of mystery plot for the audience. Yeah. This is it's a very convenient smudge, okay? Yeah. This is literally the worst pajama party ever. <laughs> Yeah, there's no popcorn, there's no pillows, nothing, nothing. There's only one chick there. <laughs> it's a total sausage fest in VJ. Yeah. And not to mention the fact that it's all, it's even. That means one person... And there's lightning for some reason? Yeah. Like, I, uh. One person isn't getting laid. <laughs> only, yeah, only one guy is getting laid at this party and it's yeah. Decker. Oh, it's Christmas. Yay. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So now it's a Batman and Robin movie with all this? <laughs> Dang it. So they opened it up. And there's ten foil. And there's ten foil. <laughs> What? That's so... Uh, why? He why wanted, would it want to do that? It makes no sex. sense. He wanted sex. This movie's about sex. It just wants to get it on. Is that the yeah. whole... Is that the underlying yeah, it wanted a, point of the movie? Is just everyone yeah. needs some loving, even yeah. living machines. And yeah. Stephen Collins does love to be people's first time. <laughs> and every... And every <laughs> Of course, the most disappointing thing is like feature one in Kirk's unit because it's about Kirk's unit. Kirk's that unit. That it's all about mm. inflating Shatner's ego. Everybody wants Shatner's dick. Even Spock. Well, I'm not going to argue that. Nothing happening. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's happening, Captain. <laughs> what? Did we hear a noise? Oh, no, I guess not. Okay, let's have a little powwow. Even though she could probably hear us. Like, what are we going to do? Se- I don't know. Secret meeting over here, guys. <laughs> no girls allowed. Yeah, you got cooties. No. Stay over there. No machine probe life forms that look like girls allowed. <laughs> Take your feature somewhere else. And then else. Decker changed Ew. the sign to say no women allowed. <laughs> girls welcome. <laughs> oh, God. Actually, I would have liked to see that now. Like a Star Trek movie dedicated to all the guys. Like, you're not allowed. Has there ever been a... I'm thinking about this. Has there ever been a transgendered Star Trek character? Probably. Yeah, probably. I wouldn't be surprised. I think some of the aliens have to count. So I think some of the aliens might be in between. What about a gay character? Has there been a gay character on Star Trek? Probably. Um... You know, I'm not sure. I'm sure on the internet people would say yes, Kirk and Spock. Yeah, really. All that, all that erotic fan fiction. Oh yeah, actually. It's all that, see, the the, that's, oh. see, that's what annoys me the most. Like, there are some really good um, uh, resources for things online. Like, um, you get, like if I want to find some good, hard to find art, you go on something like Tumblr and then type in whatever you're looking at. A, a good eighty percent of that is going to be Just... really good art. <laughs> then out of nowhere, you're going to you're going to see two dicks and Wonder Woman's body. <laughs> I, see, I had a friend of mine who did draw, Spock draw. walked into the captain's quarters. I'll give you the captain's log, Kirk replied as he unzipped his uniform. Uh, and if, <laughs> anything, if, that's your, if that's your thing, that's your thing. But at the same time, I would love to be able to look for Nightcrawler on Tumblr and not see a picture of him fisting himself with his tail. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I, a friend of mine did draw a, an illustration of Kirk and Spock fucking. I think it was a oh, Spock, t- Spock doing him from... from well, of because that's the only logical position. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's now fabulous. 
So now, how is he? So he has to transmit. Wait, wait, is he going to the quantum? Code. Wait, is he going to the quantum? He's going back. He's going back in time, and then Al is going to help yeah. him is fix he, mistakes he, of the past. Is he starring in Santa Do? <laughs> Al, why haven't I leaped yet? Well, yes. Z- Ziggy says you have to transmit the last code to V'ger. <laughs> Oh boy! Ziggy, like, Ziggy says you have to make this into a passable movie. Ugh. So, so they need to transmit the final code to Viger so he doesn't destroy Earth, but they're doing yeah. it in a way. What? So. How are they? I, this think, may, oh. I think it's to imply that they're going to have sex, but they're not. Or maybe they are having sex right now. I can't tell. It's, <laughs> I the can't, shots from the neck up. So Kirk has no idea if he should be aroused or not. Yeah. <laughs> Like, he does realize that's a machine and that his ex-girlfriend is dead. Like, he realizes that, right? Eh, to him it makes no difference. I guess not. Quick, run up the Lego set. All that matters to him is that technically <laughs> it's a newborn. That's all that matters. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. I guess we'll go there. But I guess that's bad. So now Vizier's exploding? <laughs> this is ice. Oh, wait, no. This is Vizier's O-Face. Is this, <laughs> is this, is this now Tron? It does, God, it does it look Tron. like Tron. It is Tron. Now we're looking at... What are we looking at? I don't know. So it got its information, and now it's... Destroyed. And now it's just exploding. But what about the Enterprise? I don't know. Get, it, it shows up. It just kind of appears out of nowhere. Yeah, but did they get on the Enterprise? Well, of course they got on the Enterprise. We know they got on the Enterprise in Texas. We've seen the film, but... Okay, so they did get on the... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. And now it's... So they decided to be very quick about it, right? Of all the times that we needed to see them That we needed it, to see and understand what was happening, they yeah. decided to just quick cut. It's like, ah, yeah. eh, fuck it, let's just end yes. this movie. Yeah, because what do we want to see? Like, oh no, what's going to happen to the crew? Are they going to get back on time? Or do they have to escape? What's going on? And they just stroll in. Like, here, take my... Ju- take, well, just here, another day take at the office. Coat. Take my coat, yep. Rocky Dennis. Yep. <laughs> Did we just see the beginning of the new Michael? No, no, it's no. not explode! Where did it go? If it's... What? It is 2001. Where's the space baby? The star child. Is that where the star child came from? Yeah. That's what... from, from this episode, from Star Trek, the motion See, picture. I got a, it's I all got, connected. I have a theory. They had no idea what the hell was going on as long as with the rest of the audience. So what they're doing is they're coming to their own conclusions about <laughs> what's going on. It's like, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just yeah. like watching the end of 2001. It's like, oh, I'll just I'll just make up my own conclusion because I don't know what the hell happened. Yeah, well, at least with 2001, you can. Um, like, Starfleet oh, well, just called. They just want. They want to know what the fuck just happened. <laughs> yeah, something like shouldn't they like? Shouldn't he meet up with Starfleet and give them like a final report of? Because Earth like just almost got destroyed, I guess. But they saved it in time. I don't know what's happening. Second start of the right, straight on till morning. No, you need to report back to Starfleet. What? You know that line would have meant uh, something if we had had if we had gone on a character journey with yeah, Spock exactly. discovering that he missed his friends. And Kirk's <laughs> the gap, whatever. Yeah, well, just gonna I, cruise wait, around I, the galaxy. Wait, I thought for that he said bit. second story of the right straight until morning. That's uh, Star Trek Six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and, and this was and that was really a reuse of Star Trek Two. I'm certain that this shot was. Oh, I'm sure there are. Oh, that there was, are tons that's, of that's shots. A, that's a, yeah, because I'm only because I'm only because they weren't start... because after how boring this movie was, yeah. they weren't willing to spend as much money, so yeah. they had to so reuse the budget a lot was, of stuff. I give them this. I give them this. That's a great. That's a great shot. Oh, yeah. That was a great There's shot. There's a lot of great shots. Yeah, it's just boring. <laughs> it's like, and the movie ends. And, and, movie ends. and the movie, movie ends. ends. Movie ends. And, and the movie ends. And but wait, first they need to, they need to go to Aragorn's coronation before the movie can end. <laughs> and and, and the movie end. ends. And... The end? And... Credits? Credits? Are, are they going to come up anytime soon? Yep. Yeah. 
Did what does that even mean? Connection? Okay, you know what? Okay, you know what? Aww. That is just like the ending of the Miami Connection. Only yeah. through the, only through the elimination, <laughs> only through through the the elimination of violence can world peace but be achieved. But those guys, oh, Douglas Trumbull and Don, uh, John, John Dijkstra, those guys are, Richard Gere, those are really good special effects artists. Oh, the, of course they are. Yeah. They were just stuck in, in a this shit movie. movie. So, why did we think uh, of this film? The so, final thoughts of Star Trek, the motion picture, David. Um, I, well, I, <laughs> Isaac Asimov, hey. Yeah, I actually special the, science Bob consultant. <laughs> I, the, the I don't even know what that means. The weirdest thing, it's Owen oh, Faye Neal would go on to be a wonderful makeup artist, win a bunch of Oscars. But the thing about this film is that it's flawed all to hell. But the thing is, it it does reach this weird point to where you're watching it, and you're semi bored, but you're also like, what the heck's going on? And you're trying to figure out what is going on, and so. <laughs> You get to a point where sometimes you're making fun of it, sometimes you're not, sometimes you're intrigued, sometimes you're, you're, you're bored. You're so bored, you have to try to figure out what's going on to cure your boredom. Yeah. So in a way, <laughs> it's like I don't, I obviously don't hate the film as much as you guys do. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a very flawed film, but I'm actually really fascinated by how flawed it is. The, the, I, I would agree with that. It's fascinating and in, in like you're watching it just like, God, who made all these fucking decisions? Yeah, and it was Gene Roddenberry who, after this was unsurprisingly not allowed to be in creative control of another Star yeah. Trek feature film. Because there's a film, because it's like, it's got a, you know, it's got an A-list director, it has, as we mentioned, a bunch of great, yeah. you know, crew working on a bunch of great... It takes a lot of talented people to make a very bad movie. Yeah, and the thing is with the film is Hey, that, Mike that, Myers! <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know Austin <laughs> Powers got to help this movie. Yeah, so with this film, is that <laughs> there's a, there is a good movie in here. It just needs a really good... It's editing. buried very deep down. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Uh, Cameron? Cameron, final thoughts? Star Trek think, motion picture. I think the amount of times I actually talked about this movie as opposed to every other movie or TV show. Oh, Robert Elswit! Tells you what I think about this movie. Is that say Robert This Ellsworth? movie's biggest flaw is the fact that we don't know what the characters are feeling. Like, I think at the end of the movie, Spock just decides to mm -hmm. stay on board, but we don't know why. No. It would be great if there was more stuff with him and in Kirk and McCoy, because obviously they were off doing other things in the two and a half years since this ha mm. since they got off the Enterprise. So what were they doing in that time? How did they feel? When how you know how are they different at the beginning of the movie than they are at the end? I don't get any sense of Kirk being any different at the end of the movie than he is at the beginning. Spock is barely different. Same thing with McCoy. McCoy's barely different. He's mm. the same. That's the same thing. I mean, unless, unless we want to count, uh, well, we didn't want to be on the ship before. Now we do. As I said, some kind of change. But we didn't see how they got to that change. Mm -hmm. It's, nah. I, th this movie is, I, I'll, say, I'll honestly say this. This is the worst Star Trek movie. Way worse than part five. Way um, worse. I would say, yeah. Yeah, that's worse. Yeah, yeah, that's worse. Oh, we can see Star Trek five in the future, maybe. We'll try to determine that, huh? <laughs> Very, very far into the future. Yeah, I think we're it's, kind of done with Star Trek. <laughs> I was, yeah, we'll probably be Star Trek, done for Star Trek for a while. <laughs> and then next week it's my choice. Okay, oh. Cameron, do, do you know? Do you know what movie you're gonna pick, or are you gonna leave? Oh, it a surprise? I, I, I know what I'm gonna pick. I'm not gonna tell you. But you're just not gonna tell us. Okay, yeah, okay. that's yeah. fair. So this is all signing out for you. Just hope that I'm merciful. Oh, <laughs> I will be, I will will be not, fair will, but cruel. It will not be a movie like The Room or um, Miami Connection. It will not be. You, you can pick whatever movie. No, you no, can, you can pick you Citizen Kane. I'm going to tell you what it's be. not going to be. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> that's, we're going to watch this again. Star Trek: Motion Picture. Let's just oh, put, let's just put it on a loop. <laughs> yep. Let's put it on a loop. So I think this is going to end the first commentary. Yeah. Right. Sign up. <laughs> <laughs>